Bill Parcells has won two Super Bowls in a magnificent career. He would be in the Hall of Fame, except he keeps coming back to coach again. But five years after he's done, he'll be there. You know, it, it's you're not talking about two social butterflies anyway. No. I mean, uh, you know, Bill Parcells is focused on this football game, as is Bill Belichick. They both know what's at stake. You don't want to get lost in this thing between the coaches and realize that these are two 7-2 and two football teams. And, of course, with Miami winning, this game becomes equally as important for the Patriots. And as Paul McGuire said earlier in the week, neither one of them are going to make a tackle tonight. Adam Venateri will kick off for New England. Derek Ross and Zuriel Smith are deep to receive. That's Ross 21, averaging nearly 25 yards of return. All the hype is over with now. Now we can play a football game. It has all the markings of a great one. New England for the first time wearing the new silver jerseys in front of a sellout crowd in Foxborough. And we are underway. Smith on the return, straight up the middle to the 28-yard line. The Cowboys offense has a good run blocking line anchored by seven-time pro bowler Larry Allen. He's fighting injuries to stay in the lineup. A big play receiver core and former Patriot Terry Glenn has the most catches on the club with 33 and the most touchdowns with five. The Cowboys' most improved player, Quincy Carter. He has managed the offense well and cut down on his mistakes. And Joey Galloway will not be dressed tonight for Dallas. And that's a big loss for the Dallas Cowboys. So it'll be Glenn and Bryant as the starting wide receivers. Hamburg gets the first carry, cuts it to the outside. Horse collar there at the 32. The Pats defense has survived multiple injuries. Richard Seymour, a pro bowler, is always around the ball and a terrific inside rusher. In his 13th season, Roman Pfeiffer may be having his most consistent year. 79 tackles, number two on the team. And Ty Law has played with a bad ankle all year long and still goes man-to-man -man with the best. He is a three-time Pro Bowl pick. Two tight ends for the Cowboys. Hambrick on the toss. Grable got a piece of him, and down he goes near a first down. But, you know, when, when you have an offensive line as big as the Dallas Cowboys, and you've got guys like Garrod and Young at 320, 325 on the right side, you just toss the ball, and, and Hambrick is not a small guy either at 235. You get them all going. They want to run the football. You see the carries this year, 314 this season, most in the NFL. Bill Parcells does it for a couple of reasons. Number one, that's his style. Secondly, he wants to protect Quincy Carter a little bit and not put too much of the burden on his shoulders. And as long as you can run the ball and pick up four and five yards at a time, you might as well just continue on doing it all night long. Plus, the other thing is the likelihood of the, of the mistakes, and that's the one thing that this offensive line has to be careful of, that they don't get in first and 15s and first and 20s. As long as they keep it manageable, they should be fine. Of course, everybody thinks this is the only way Bill Parcells plays football. When he went to New England, he said, I've got group blood so. I'm not crazy. I'm throwing it. Put it up almost 700 times in a season. Third and inches opening possession for the Cowboys. They bring in an extra blocker, Jamar Martin, number 34. Hambrick will be the tailback. Quincy Carter spending a long time calling a play. I'll tell you, it, it, my experience in the past, when someone spent a long time calling a play, it's, it, it's most of the time it's a pass, but I doubt it here. They go to Hamburg, he lowers his shoulders, Seymour has him, but he got the first down. Troy Hambrick last year angered a lot of people when he popped off about playing time behind the legend Emmett Smith, and Emmett was none too happy about it. But he did everything he could to treat, teach Troy Hambrick what you have to do to be a successful running back. And when Emmett went to Phoenix, he said the last thing he told Hambrick, someday there's going to be a 23-year-old come in and try to take your job. Do not turn your back on him. It shows a lot of class from Emmett Smith and Troy Hambrick who heard those words and has apologized profusely for what happened last year. 
You know, they just they just ran the ball up the middle, and, and uh, when this team and Ted Washington is now back with New England, he is the guy in the middle. If you're going to run, you don't want to run at him because you, it, it automatically takes two guys to block him. And I also think Troy Hamburg is the type of a back that the more he carries the ball, the more comfortable he's going to be. He'll probably split time with Adrian Morell a little bit. That Patriots rush defense, which was shredded a year ago, has moved up to seven in the NFL in spite of all the injuries. Harder to throw for the first time under pressure. Got rid of it in a nice fingertip catch by Jason Witt. Boy, I'll tell you, this was all Quincy Carter, and he gets to the outside. I mean, he can see the pressure on him, and then he has enough presence of mind to find Witten coming out underneath. Here's 82 coming underneath. Watch. Look at his throw. That looks a little, not a little bit like Farm. <laughs> That's a little bit like Farm throwing back and up. Whoa, Paul. Not a little. Don't, don't quite go there yet. What a terrific catch by Witten, too. Trying to get the first down. Coach Parcells says, look, it's a first down. No, it's not. Bill not Parcells does not toss around the word great, but he said of Jason Witten, I think he's got a chance to be a great tight end. He's got the speed to get deep, and you've already seen his hands. Well, Another yeah. measurement, again, short. The other thing is, you can usually look at the roster of the team and decide what they want to do. Bill Parcells has four tight ends on this roster. That'll tell you that he expects to pound the football at you. And make no mistake, we found this out the other last night talking. He calls the plays. He being Bill Parcells. Quarterback keeper across midfield in the Patriots territory. Let's check in with Susie. Mike, given Bill Parcells' penchant for being hard on his quarterbacks, it was surprising to hear Quincy Carter say he's enjoying it. He explains his mom was that way, as well as his high school coach. He thrives on it. He gravitates toward it. He believes having someone on his back brings out the best in him. He looks at Bill's return to the game and the opportunity to be coached by a future Hall of Famer as a blessing. One thing he certainly doesn't want to do is disappoint Bill Parcells. Susie, except the first time Bill Parcells met Quincy Carter and said, son, your social life is over. That was a little hard. Hambrick. And Willie McGinnis got a piece of him, and Teddy Bruschi finished up. So I think they're going to have a problem seriously trying to run wide on these guys. And the reason why they're going to do that, Willie McGinnis, you're going to see him at the end of the line. He'll be up on the line. Watch him stay out there. He gets out, beats the block, and makes the tackle. What has happened because of Quincy Carter bootlegging and running around, the defensive end on the side that he's going to come to, on both, actually on both sides, they're staying home. So I think it's going to be difficult to get to the outside. And they've got Washington back off the injury list to play that nose tackle in the 3-4 alignment. Second and 11. And around Antonio Bryant and Bryant only gets to the 48-yard line. Rodney Harrison, the big free agent pickup from San Diego, in on the stop. Rodney Harrison makes his play, but Brable actually sells himself inside. He's number 50, but watch Rodney Harrison. Look at him go at his feet. Man, I tell you, that is an outstanding play. He knows he hasn't got the speed to catch him, so he just takes a swipe at his leg, kicks one leg into the other, and knocks him down. Nice play. The 82nd tackle of the year for Rodney Harrison. He leads the club. Zuriel Smith, number 87, comes in as a third wide receiver on third and nine. Over the head of Carter. Trying to throw on the run and throws it out of bounds. Yeah, but that was a very smart play by Quincy Carter. That's what I referred to in the open, talking about managing football games. He avoided a very big negative play by trying to make too much. Matt Lear just sends it right over his head, bounces off his finger. But look at the presence. He doesn't rush. He doesn't get excited. He knows he's got athletic ability, and then he just throws it away. Toby Gowen, who has done a nice job of kicking the ball inside the 20, will punt. Hasn't had much of a average this year. Kevin Falk on the poor kick says get away from it. There is a marker down as the ball kicks out of bounds near the 20. It running should be into the quarterback. Should be running into the that, kicker. That's all it'll be into the kicker. It'll only be a five-yard penalty. It should be. And not a first down if it's only five. Please don't plead your case. You ran into it. <laughs> no, no. No, they, they were just checking to see what it is. 
Not 15. It's five yards. That was a bump. Running into the kicker, number 30. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. That's Gerard Cherry, the veteran special teams player. Well, they had a block on because they sent about nine guys. Third most penalties in the NFL this year. Almost nine per game. But Bill Belichick has one bugaboo about his football team. It's the amount of penalty. Everything else is correctable. This has just been on all year. Falk waits inside the 10. Going hangs it high again. Falk comes up. Diving fair catch. 20-yard line. Tom Brady and the Patriots offense will start from there when we come back to Foxborough. There is nobody in football that makes the adjustments week to week that Bill Belichick does with his defense. Now keep in mind, he's had two weeks to prepare for the Dallas Cowboys because the Patriots are coming off a of bye. As a matter of fact, this is the third straight team that the Cowboys have played that are coming off are coming off a of bye. Antoine Smith is the deep man behind Brady, and he'll get the call for a couple up the middle. Up front for New England because of injury, Pro Bowl center Damian Woody has moved to guard. He has been terrific there. David Gibbons had the biggest game of his career in the Pats' last win, 87 yards receiving against Denver, including the game-winning score. And Tom Brady, Brady has repeatedly come through in the clutch. He's getting hot, too. Six touchdown passes, only one interception in his last three games. For the Cowboys' number one ranked defense, three-time Pro Bowler Leroy Glover gets a great inside push. Three years ago, he led the league in sacks. Dat Wynn, who you just saw, is playing at a Pro Bowl level. Undersized in the middle, he more than compensates with his effort and toughness. And an outstanding secondary led by five-time Pro Bowl selection Darren Woodson. He is the Cowboys' all-time leading tackler. Kevin Falk will check in on third and six. If the Cowboys hold true to form, they should be blitzing here. They've done it all year, but they come with four this time. Ready to Falk in the flat. Needs five more yards and won't get it. Singleton, the free agent from Tampa Bay with a short tackle. That's what happens when you expect the team to blitz and they don't blitz and they put everybody else out in coverage. They only came with four. And you only have three guys on out on a route. The other thing is the one thing that jumped out on uh, to me while I studied the film of the Dallas Cowboys defense is everybody on that defense tackles well. Their corners, their safeties, their linebackers. Zuriel Smith waits for Ken Walters punt. Joey Galloway, in addition to being starting wide receiver, is a Cooperberg. Walter has struggled all year. This is a poor kick and takes a bounce straight back at it. A 26-yard punt by the veteran. And Don Davis was downfield, but down it before it did any more damage. The chess game between Parcells and Belichick continues. ESPN Sunday Night Football, brought to you by NikeGridiron.com. HP, HP Technology Services and People help make more things more possible. And the next Ford F-150, built Ford Tough. That's the USS Constitution, the warship completed in 1797, the oldest commissioned warship afloat. I know what it takes to repair my year-old boat. I'd hate to get the bill for that one. Paul, I was the executive officer on it. Paul served on that. <laughs> Two years ago. Uh, Cowboys years. true to form on that first drive out of nine plays. They ran the ball seven times. They'll start this drive with two tight ends, Witten and Campbell. Hambrick lowers his shoulder, and the Seymour bounced off the game tackle of the 48. When you look at the New England Patriots on defense, what they want to do is they're going to take away what they perceive and believe to be the most dangerous aspect of the Dallas Cowboy offense. In this case, I think without Joey Galloway on the field, it's Terry Glenn. And Terry Glenn got a lot of attention in the first series. Now, Parcells really likes to try and throw the football, and run the football. Belichick was, is considered a defensive wizard. They both know each other so well that you find yourself trying to counter what the other guy's thinking and get away from your own normal habits. It doesn't look like Parcells has done that. 
Neither team has really taken much of a chance yet. Here's Ricky Anderson out in the flat. Ty Law had it kick off his chest. Nearly got it the second time, and he was right there if Richie Anderson had made oh, the catch. Bobby Hamilton was right in Quincy Carter's face. Bobby Hamilton, number 91, on the right-hand side of your screen. Here he comes. He's in his face now. Quincy Carter threw that ball a little bit behind. Look at Ty Law. Almost makes the interception. Oh, but it's impossible. He hits him in the face, then on the shoulder. Ball's in the air. No chance. As this game goes on, you're going to see Romeo Cornell, the defensive coordinator of the Patriots, start to throw a little bit more at Quincy Carter and make him stop and think and look. Three wide receivers on third and eight. Seymour from behind, and that one is thrown into the middle of the line. It hit a Patriot incomplete. Now no. they're going to say it hit one of the Cowboys. It hit an offensive lineman, Michael, and it doesn't make any difference. If it hits an offensive lineman, he's an eligible receiver, and it's a penalty. And yep. they're standing right beside Ryan Young, number 75. He looked like the guy who got it in the back of the head. And he hasn't been playing a little bit, and I know he hasn't been working on his hands <laughs> while he's been out. <laughs> yeah. oh, if he, he had to work on his neck. Tom White, our referee. Illegal touching of the forward pass. Offensive lineman. Pass interference. Defense number 82. The penalty's all set. Replay third down. Number who? 82. Right. Here comes the pressure first. I didn't see 82, but here comes the pressure right up the middle. They just hold right inside. When they rush the passer, and that's Seymour, Richard Seymour. Look at this. He's there. There's with the ball. It's him right in the rump. Eighty-two is a tight end for New England. He wouldn't be out there. I don't think he's going both not, ways. Do you? Not unless they're really doing some substitution <laughs> we haven't studied. Well, you said they're going to throw a strange defense at him. This would really be strange. Again, these are not the situations that the Dallas Cowboys want to find themselves in. Third and sevens, third and eights, third and longs. Most of the yardage the Cowboys have gotten in the passing game has come off play fakes. Set up. See, it was, they called it on an offensive player. It was Jason Wheaton, number 82. Two down. offensive penalties. And that's loss of down. Bill Parcells getting an explanation. So they got the 82 right, but the uniform color was wrong. Well, you know, the Patriots have switched to silver, so they're a little bit closer <laughs> a little to the Cowboy Blue. Going will punt. And Kevin Falk waits outside his team. Should quick try to kick it short and just kick it out of bounds and kick it hard. Hey. Falk at the 14. A little scene took it up to the 24, 10-yard return after a punt of 37, scoreless first quarter in Foxborough between two seven and two teams. Welcome back to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Cowboys and Patriots. No score, 6:43 to go, first quarter. Patriots with the ball for the second time. They'll start from their own 25-yard line. Cowboys come to the line indicating They do come. Brady steps up and guns it wide. Intended for Dion Branch, and he couldn't handle it. Bill Parcells and Bill Belichick, longtime associates out for warm-ups. Parcells looking toward the sideline. Belichick glancing in his direction. Neither acknowledged the other. Could have said, you want some gum? He said, no. he said no. No. Playing dumb. They both professed their respect for each other during the week with all the press about their association. Brady with Ellis pressuring him. Gets it out to Christian Fourier and he crosses the 30. See what you saw just on that play. Charlie Wise, the offensive coordinator of the New England Patriots, he was also a part of that staff. And he told me earlier, he told me on Friday, he said, you know. The situation is Bill knows me very well. I know him. Now I have to think about what I want to call. I have to get out of my routine a little bit going against Parcells and his defense. But you see that they're small up front, the Dallas Cowboys are. They need to bring 
backers and safeties to put pressure on Tom Brady. When he rifles this one to 48, first down up at the 41 yard line. Well, I'll tell you, this is, a, this is an excellent throw and catch. Fourier is in the middle of the field, and that's where basically everything is open. When you're blitzing and things are happening, they're going man to man, but look in the middle of the field. Look at Fourier. He is wide open in the middle. When that thing got there in a hurry, didn't oh, it? Oh, did it ever. Al Singleton is a guy that made a tackle, and that's another one of the guys that Parcell says he likes on defense. Antoine Smith trying to turn the corner. And that Dallas defense tough to run on wide with so much speed. Every yard the Dallas Cowboy defense gives up is, go is going to be fought for. And New England is not going to do it. You see, they're number one, 15 points allowed. 235 in yards, 140, 49 passing yards allowed. Keep in mind, in nine football games, they've given up an average of six points in the first half of every one of those games. It has been a marvelous unit, but they know this game and the next three will really be a test for their schedule. A lot of people wondering if Dallas is for real. We may find out tonight. Here it comes. Tried to set up a screen, but Falk was caught up in the middle of it. Dallas did a nice job defending. You know what you're seeing more and more of in during football games now, and, and I saw it a few times today, is when you're trying to run a middle screen now, and as soon as the lineman sees that back, not blocking somebody, but sneaking up inside, they grab him. And, and they don't let him out. And with the Cowboys, because they bring so many blitzes, if you can sneak somebody out, there's going to be very few people to stop him from going to the goal line. So it's almost a risk-reward type of situation. Take the chance. Maybe it works. Third and nine for Brady. They need to reach the Dallas 48 yard line for a first time. Here comes the beat. Blitz. They pick it up very well. Brady with a lot of time. Whoa! You know, and if you blitz and don't get there, you got a problem. Roy Glover told us yesterday, we said, you know, you blitz a lot. He looked us right in the eye and says, when you live by the blitz, you're going to die by the blitz. And here's the situation where they picked up the blitz and they were all, watch this line of scrimmage. Look where the blue shirts are. This is a two-man route. Everybody else is blocking. Charlie Wise, what a great call. Sometimes you want to bait defenses into blitzing. And then you just sit back there when you've got a guy like Tom Brady. And he's at the top of his game like he's been playing. Hard to stop. First down, New England. Brady to the play fake. Throws it away. The only guy he had out there was Patrick Pass. But you know, the, when, when Leroy Glover looked at us yesterday, he told us about live by the blitz and die by the blitz. On that last play, not this one now, the one before that, he was the only guy that was in the backfield. He's the only guy that made it by the line of scrimmage. The rest of the guys were still on the line of scrimmage when that ball was thrown. One of the areas of the New England Patriots that doesn't get talked about, and something Bill Belichick, I'm sure, very proud of, is the way their offensive line is played, especially with the rookie Dan Popin playing in the middle. Dallas has been really good in the red zone. The Patriots have not been. This carry will get down to the five. And keep in mind, this is an offensive line for New England that's missing two starters. Mike Compton and Adam Clem were hurt early in the year, so they have a rookie. Dan Copen is the center, and Tom Ashworth, who was a third-string guy playing right tackle. The, the thing you said that we, when we got here uh, last Thursday, Michael, is just it, that, you know, 40 guys have started for this team. They've had more injuries than anyone else in the National Football League, and six of the guys who started were rookies. I mean, that's incredible, the job that they have done. Two tight ends, two wide receivers. Brady retreats, throws to the corner of the end zone, and throws it away. Three bad. In a game this like game this. three might be pretty good. Well, when you've got two good defenses, you just don't want to give up opportunities to put points on the board. And that's exactly what Tom Brady did. If he could get outside and threaten the corner, you take the throw. If not, you throw it away. You're talking and about a guy that... Terry, who has hit 75% of his field goals this year, will come on. Tom Brady, after the year he had last year, being the, the Super Bowl wonder, wonder kid and all that struggle last year, has really played consistent football for this team. And he has come through in the clutch. Even Terry to take the lead, and it's perfect. The big play in this drive, 
Dion Branch wide open over the middle, and Tom Brady threw a strike for 46 yards to set up the field goal. The Patriots have the first quarter lead at home, 3.05 to go after an impressive drive, 70 yards in 10 plays. Deion Branch had the big one, a 46-yard gain on the pass from Tom Brady. Derek Ross at the 9. Flag is down as Ross spins to the outside, taken out of bounds at the 30. And now we'll check the marker with referee Tom White. There's three flags on the field. Everybody saw the same thing. They all picked him up and threw him into one little pile. All th you're right, all three <laughs> officials told him the same thing, and I'm imagining it's the same person. Holding, number 56, during the return, to 10-yard penalty. That'll be a first down, timeout. That's the linebacker Brady James who committed the violation and that will get Dallas all the way back to its own 11. It's Sunday night and we're in New England where the Patriots lead the Cowboys 3-0. Dallas has been true to its form. They have run the ball most of the time. In fact, two-thirds. And haven't done much with it. Carter, short drop, the throw on first down, and throws out to his tight end, battling for yardage across the 20 to the 21 goes Dan Campbell. Let's go to Susan. Well, Mike, you guys mentioned it in the first series. Bill Belichick's game plan is to shut down the opposing team's top star. For the Dallas Cowboys, it's been Terry Glenn. Bill Parcells transforming him from an unwanted entity to their most productive pass catcher, but not so far. The Patriots taking turns, shutting him down from Tyrone Poole to Ty Law, Willie McGinnis, and then the rookie Eugene Wilson. Terry Glenn has not been able to get going tonight. And Susie, he said he couldn't wait to get back here because he hates everything about New England. Carter throwing on a run to Hambrick. And Hambrick taken down by Harrison at the 36. But that's a first down for the Dallas Cowboys. Boy, what a great play by Quincy Carter. This is all Quincy Carter. He... He, you talk about seeing things. He says, people don't think I'm seeing a lot of things. Well, you, I'll tell you what you can see. is We see a guy going to nail you. McGinnis right there. Now, just watch what he does. He throws back against his body. Look at this throw that he makes, Joe. And this is a perfect spiral. Bang! You can't throw any better than that. But you also see, like you said, well, he sees everything in front of him. So he's not worried about an off linebacker picking it off. Richie Anderson is the man in motion. He'll lead to Hambrick. Hambrick cuts it back and is taken down by Harrison at the 38-yard line. Harrison, almost the exact kind of player that Lawyer Malloy was for so long here. The great strong safety was released only five days before the season started and caused such a controversy. And the guy that's playing his position, Eugene Wilson, came here as a second-round pick as a corner. And Bill Belichick said very simply, I asked him, why, you know, why is Eugene playing safety? He said, because I didn't want him standing next to me. He's one of my best players, and I wanted him on the field. First time they told him he was moving to safety, he says, I thought it was a joke, but nobody else was laughing. Here comes the blitz. Draw play. Stuck. Back at the 35. Oh, Richard man. Seymour was there and had a lot of help. Bruski was in the pile. <laughs> What's 93, Richard Seymour? Bang, he makes a move back to the inside. There's just no chance of anybody blocking him. And you know, that's Larry Allen. We're talking about one of the best guards in the game. And that's that's the other thing about the New England defense is you can put Seymour on the nose, you can put Ted Washington on the nose, you can put Dan Klecko on the nose, and you almost wind up with a 100-pound differential going from Williams to Klecko with Seymour in the middle. Bill Belichick has built a very versatile defense. Carter under pressure again, steps up, takes off. Spins to the 41-yard line, not enough for the first down. And taken down by Roman Pfeiffer, the outside linebacker. A rapid first quarter here at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. And it's 3-0 Pats. 
Three nothing Patriots as we start the second quarter. Dallas facing a punting situation. So far, advantage Belichick with a three nothing lead over Bill Parcells. Toby going to kick and Tyrone Poole at 24. End over end and returnable. To the 31-32 yard line and nine yard return. Our Sunday stud question, who's the coach of the year thus far? Bill Belichick, 72. John Fox, 8-2 with the Panthers. Marvin Lewis, after they knocked off Kansas City today, is 5-5. Five five. Is it Bill Parcells or Dick Vermeil, who suffered the first loss for Kansas City today? You can vote right now by logging on to ESPN.com, and we'll give you the results in the fourth quarter. I think it's they're tough picks up there. Oh, aren't they ever? They really are. That's five really good coaches that have done outstanding jobs. Brady with time. Double pumps and then throws complete. A flag is down after Gibbons caught the ball. Tell us, Tom. Illegal contact on the defense. In the last series, you saw Tom Brady taking advantage of the blitz. The Cowboys came. Roy Williams has stepped up. You've got Ernie, uh, you've got David Givens there. You've got Deion Branch outside making the move. It's a two-man route. They block eight. There's the set. Slide over. You see Branch cut across and underneath. Newman couldn't stay with them, and now it's just a foot race. But those are the kind of opportunities that come up when a team blitzes. Nice pick by Givens. Tom Brady, as you saw, has already hit twice as many plays, over 20 yards this year, that he did all of last season. The reason why he's able to do that is I was talking to him on the uh, yesterday at practice, and he said he's getting the ball up quicker. And by getting it up quicker, he's given his receivers an opportunity to either run to the ball or run to the space where the ball is going to be or make a play on it. That's why he's able to complete one. Their best receiver, Troy Brown, not playing tonight because of a leg injury. But this team, if anybody's been able to, has been able to adjust to injury. Brady, short hops one in there that time to Deion Branch. Let's go to Susie. Well, Mike, I was talking to Charlie Weiss before the game, the Patriots offensive coordinator, and he said the most important thing is not to overcoach. Too many coaches force their own ego on the game plan, but with the relative inexperience and all the injuries to the receiving core, the number one thing is that the kids just need to know what's going on. That's first and foremost. He said you won't notice a difference without David Patton and without Troy Brown that it's going to be seamless tonight. And that's a marvelous thing to watch, Susie, how they are able to manage that, losing their star players on both sides of the ball. It's a remarkable 7-2. And, and this one is another strike to Branch. He followed him, but hung on. That's the second week in a row. They had this happen against the Denver Broncos. This goes right through Kevin Falk's hands, number 33. Watch the throw. You see Falk in the picture. Look at him go up. He goes up. It goes right through his hands and right into Dion Branch's hands. It happened against the Denver Broncos, and it happened again tonight. Tremendous concentration by Branch, but the play is going to be wiped out. And what is that? Is bird, it? bird taking off. <laughs> I got to hear this. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 83 on the offense. They made the first down yardage, therefore we'll penalize 15 yards. It'll be first down and 10. You can only assume that is taunting after Branch made the catch. Now you you're talking about a second-year player. That's the one thing you don't get. You don't get that with a Troy Brown because of his 11 years. And that's a good call by the officials. They're very consistent about the taunting. Backs it up to the 50 but it will be first and 10. Falk, boy, coming up from the secondary like a <laughs> missile was Roy Williams. Fortunately for Falk, he didn't catch him square on. I love, you were talking to Parcells about Roy Williams, number 31, you know, he says, now this, this guy hit you now. 
I love when they talk like this guy hit you now. Well, he also said he's one biscuit away from being a linebacker, <laughs> yeah. when the truth of the matter is he's as big as Dexter Coakley. Coakley's 236, and Williams is 235. Yeah, but he runs in a class. So that's that one little biscuit. Part. Brady against the four-man rush down the middle. This time, Branch can't hang on as he ran into a crowd. Well, when he ran in there, there were four blue shirts. And I can assure you, he saw two. Here comes Branch over the middle. On the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see what Brady sees. Now, look at the guys that are there. Look at the throw, though. Gets right over Al Singleton's little pinky and puts it right in the soft pocket of the defense. He's thrown as well as he ever has, I'll tell you that. Six out of 12 so far, approaching 100 yards. Third and seven here. Now Brady wants to change the clock. Has time and goes deep up for grabs down the sideline. Intercepted by Newman, but out of bounds. You know what's amazing about Dallas's defense, Joe? And I, and I know they blitz a lot on third down, but they're they're playing the basic 4-3-4 four, four defense. Yes. On you know they don't care. Look at this play. Look at this play here by Newman going up in the air. Well, he's out of bounds, but that is an athletic well, move. Well, that's why he was Dallas's number one pick out of K State. And, uh, you know, of course, Bill Parcell made him his water boy during training camp, and that's just to let the world know that Bill's in charge. He was the fourth award winner for the best defensive back in the country, and a lot of scouts rated him as the best pick in the draft. Dallas got a number five overall. Zuriel Smith back for the punt, backs away from it, and it takes a nice New England bounce. It'll be down inside the 10-yard line. A punt of 41, touched by Matt Chatham. 12-19 to go in the first half. A strategic defensive battle so far. ESPN Sunday Night Football brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Friendly non-stop service all across the country. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. Saab, welcome to the state of independence. And Motorola, intelligence everywhere. Back at this beautiful stadium, Robert Kraft, the owner, spent $325 million of his own money on this complex. Said it was tougher getting this built than it was one winning a Super Bowl. Now he's done both. Carter to throw from his end zone under pressure. Still looking and throws complete to Bryant up at the 13-yard line. This is something that Quincy Carter has done through the first part of this ball game. He's been moving around in the pocket. There he feels the pressure from Vrabel. Manages to get it out to Jason Witten. Now feels pressure from Willie McGinnis. Slides over, finds Troy Hambra. Now if you can't find anybody open and you're still getting pressure from Willie McGinnis, tuck it away and run. Now, there he is in the pocket and out of the pocket. And, and I, I think this really helps him. He's a better pocket passer than he is outside scrambling around. But what he's doing, and that's why his percentage is so low outside the pocket, is he's throwing the ball away. And that's smart. Second and five. Back to the ground game with Hambrick. Tries to turn it left and then dives forward up past the 17-yard line. For more on Quincy, here's Susie. Mike, the big question about Quincy Carter from this point on in the season is his staying power. Because up till this point, he's never started more than eight NFL games. This will be his 10th. Bill Parcells talked to him about that this week. That the most important part of the season for him will be November and December. But Quincy is confident that he can last because he is living and breathing football. He's taking care of his body, he's eating right, and he is studying more than he ever thought he had to. And Susie Richie Anderson was one of the guys that said Quincy is the first guy at the complex to study film. He is the last guy to leave. And that wasn't necessarily the same case under Dave Campo when he was the head coach. Yeah, but Bill Parcell still doesn't know about Quincy Carter because he hasn't really gone through a tough time yet. He hasn't thrown a bunch of interceptions. He hasn't lost three or four ball games. He hasn't had the media all over his rear end. He hasn't had teammates looking out of one eye at him and saying, how are you going to do? So he's still growing, and with a little luck, he doesn't have it for quite a while. But it's down the road coming. Third and inches for Dallas. Quarterback keeper, and they should have the first down. 
Yeah, <laughs> I really love this play. Oh, you know that's because you never played quarterback. Uh, hey, I did when I was in grade school. <laughs> yeah, I t the reason I like this play is because there, there's no other handoff. You don't have to go all the way back to the guy in the backfield. Right. You don't. The defensive line can't blow you up. Watch what Quincy Carter does. He stops for a second, lets the center make his block, and then just slides in the hole. All they need is, what, about eight inches. And that's the biggest key is you've got to allow the line to make a block so you can find a crease. I used to get knocked backwards all the time. <laughs> he got knocked dizzy, too. <laughs> yeah, had two tall Jones and Harvey Martin hit him too many points. Carter out in the flat to Richie Anderson, who's always been a tremendous pass receiver out of the backfield. And when you see coaches go to a different franchise like Bill Parcells has moved, all the time they go back to their past, and Richie Anderson played for Bill Parcells with the Jets. He knows what he's going to get out of Richie Anderson. He fills a specific need, and he brings him to Dallas. Yeah, you know, sitting next to him last night, I'm looking at his hands. And man, that guy's huge. got such huge hands. Well, the thing he's done more for this football team than any place is he's actually carried the ball more, 39 times coming into tonight, as opposed to 26 receptions. That's unusual for him. It's unusual in the NFL. Fullbacks don't carry the ball anymore. Now, Jim. You know what I like about this Dallas Cowboy offense? Patience. And Parcells, you know, think about it as we ask Parcells again. Will Quincy Carter come to the line of scrimmage in this game and call audibles? And he said, no. And I think more teams should do no. it. No. He's going to call. He's going to run the play. They call. Yeah, and I think more teams should do it. I mean, you would have to say that, you know, these backs of the Cowboys aren't necessarily the most talented in the league. They're pounders. They're plotters. And, you know, if you want to run the football, and he runs it 14 times and throws it eight. I think his choices of passes have been very good. First and ten, second and short, throw the ball. Hambrick, seven yards behind the line of scrimmage, gets that running start. Horse collared by Harrison, but makes it up to the 40 anyhow. A gain of about eight yards. Monday night countdown at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. The best place to get ready for Monday night football. Then on ABC, the Monday night game at 9. Hines Ward and the Steelers against Carroll Owens and the 49ers. A couple of teams desperate to get back in their respective races. The other thing that Bill Parcells does so well is he simplifies this game. The first thing he told the Cowboys, these are the things that you shouldn't do. We're going to avoid the obvious mistakes. Now let's find what we do well. And he has identified those things. That's why they're 7 and 2. And Hambrick has the first down as he gets up to the 44 yard line. The other thing about Bill Parcells, he is as cutting and sarcastic as anyone you will ever be around. And I love it. In March, he asked an offensive lineman how much he weighed. The lineman said 340 pounds. He pointed to the scales and says, let's go see. The lineman got on the scales. It was at 367 in Parcells. Boy, you sure gained a lot of weight on the walk over here. <laughs> and the footnote to that is the guy came into camp at 345. Exactly. He's got a way of dealing with people. Play action by Carter. Pretty good protection. Launches it down the middle. Bryant got his hands on it. Couldn't hold it. And good coverage by Ty Law. Boy, Ty Law, you think he can't run? Did you say he has a bad ankle? I don't think so. If you don't want to play in this game, this kind of game, then you don't want to play football. Ty Law is just absolutely the perfect coverage. Antonio Bryant, it looked like he has touchdown. Look at, watch Ty Law come in. Bang, knock the ball away. Boy, is that timing and that, that speed. Keep in mind, Antonio Bryan is starting tonight because Joey Galloway's got the ham, and uh, Zuriel Smith is returning punts because Joey, Halloway, Joey Galloway usually does that as well. Ty Law is still one of the best. Carter with time has a double clutch, goes to Richie Anderson. He's across midfield in the New England territory at the 49, three yards shy of a first down. Ted Johnson, who's just coming back off the injured list, another one, and Roman Pfeiffer were in on the stop. Up until that last first down when they threw the ball downfield and almost had a completion, Joe, the first three first downs, they got five yards, nine yards, eight yards on first down. And that's exactly what Bill Parcells has to have to sort of protect Quincy a little bit. But remember, this drive started on their own six. This is, or, excuse me, or eight. This is a very impressive drive, even if it doesn't go any further from here. Third and three.
Carter takes off, and he got the first down. There's a flag on a play, and there's going to be holding in the backfield, and it's on number 65, Garage. And he really was. He was holding Richard Seymour. Richard Seymour beats him on an inside move, and he's got him horse-collared as he takes him to the ground. Well, I'll tell you, you can see Richard Seymour. Holding. Number 65. Offense. The 10-yard penalty remains. Third down. All right, it's the right guard, Garrod, and Seymour. Seymour is six foot six. Look at number 65 is on the right-hand side of the screen. Here goes Seymour. He, meet, he beats him to the outside. He's got him beat. And then when you grab him, Quincy Carter steps up. The referee is the man who makes this call because he can see it from the back. Look at the holding. That is holding. And that's just as good as a sack for a defensive lineman. Bill Parcell did not care for the call or did not care for the play by Gerard. Especially on third and short. Now they got third and 13. And this team is not built to convert third and 13s. And they've got a timeout. 3-0 Patriots against the Cowboys. So far, the Patriots tossing a shutout at Bill Parcells from the Dallas Cowboys, and Dallas will be facing a third and 13. Big thing here, third and three or less, they convert all three of them. The other three they've had, after four yards, they've not been able to get the first down. This offense isn't built for that yet. Carter goes to the shotgun. Pressure coming. And throws oh. complete to the 39-yard line, a bullet to Bryant. How good is this? How good is this? This young man steps up, steps up. He, I mean, he, he sees, he reads the blitz coming to his outside. You saw what happened that when they didn't convert, but look at the time he has. And look at how smart he is. Now, this is a kid that everybody considers a running quarterback, but he knows he's not going to be able to pick up 13 yards. He held the ball five seconds. Defensive backs cannot cover anybody for five seconds. And then Bryant makes an excellent catch on the ball. Seven out of 11 so far for Quincy Carter. Back to the ground with Hambrick. And Hambrick hit immediately by the left end, Bobby Hamilton. As Quincy Carter talked about the first big game he played in was a few weeks ago when they were 5-1, and one, went and played Tampa Bay. That didn't go too well. He said it didn't go well, but he learned from there. He said, this is the next big test for me. I learned a lot in the Tampa game. He says it's important we get off to a good start early, and you can see his confidence continue to grow in the comfort level that he's having both in the pocket and running this offense. Well, after this game, they face Carolina, Miami, and Philadelphia. So the tests are going to come in rapid succession. Carter airs this one out. Overthrown for Bryant, coming step for step by Tyrone Poole, who was another big free agent acquisition from Denver this year. Well, I'll tell you, this offensive line at Dallas, and they are just doing the job at the point of attack. And then you're talking about Poole covering on the outside. Watch this, Brian. This is just step for step. That ball had to be, I don't know where he could have put it to catch it, because Poole had him to the inside. He could have walked over and handed it to him, but it was all over. <laughs> when Tyrone wasn't around to throw it to at all. Originally a first round draft choice of the Carolina Panthers. Another big third down for Quincy Carter. Again, flushed out of the pocket. There's a flag down, he throws in complete. That was intended for Zuriel Smith. See, now, if you're the New England Patriots, you cannot commit a, a, a stupid foul here, like a face mask penalty. I mean, that's just third and ten. You've got them where you want them. They're out of field goal range. You're running down towards the end of the half. Well, that's something against the Cowboys. Here's Tom White with the explanation. We have two fouls on the play. Illegal use of the hands to the head, number 76 on Dallas. Illegal use of the hands to the head, number 73 on Dallas. Both penalties are declined. 
fourth down. That's, that's both guys on the left-hand side. Flo's Al Adams, 76, Larry Allen, 73. They must learn that technique together. Well, you know, that's the second time they've had double uh, double penalties on their offense. Yeah, but same the same penalty against the guys standing next to each other. And did you see the shot of Bill Belichick? He said, who said we declined it? <laughs> that's right. He might take it. Because right now you're looking at maybe a 60-yard field goal attempt by Cundiff. Now, remember, he's hit three out of four. Or going or for it. Excuse me, 54 yards. The announcement, New England has changed their mind and intended to accept the illegal use of the hands. Number 73 is declined. Number 76 oh. is accepted. Third down. 10-yard penalty. <laughs> Let me say this. I, I don't necessarily think that Tom White said it correctly. New England doesn't get a chance to change their mind. Well, they never think... accepted or declined before. Thank you. And I think that's what should have been reported by the officials, that no decision had been made. Now they get the penalty. They don't, you don't well, change your mind. All right, you say you, yes or no. Mr. Know-it-all, tell me why Larry didn't get called. And they chose Flozell. Because Flozell was a little bit further behind. So <laughs> Larry's been to seven Pro Bowls. Yeah, Larry's much bigger. <laughs> than all of us. <laughs> the old guru. There's an old adage about quarterbacks. You blitz the good ones and you play zones against the, the not so good ones. And Quincy Carter is in the young stage, which means that he's not one of those good ones yet. And we've got another timeout with 5.16 to go in the half. Still 3-0 New England. The Cowboys, as usual, controlling the time of possession because of the way they run the ball. So far, it has not paid off in any points for them. And they face another third and long here. In spite of the disparity in time. Carter deep and knocked away incomplete. Well, what a play by Tyrone Poole. Antonio Bryant cannot run past Tyrone Poole. He has got some wheels. Eight years in the league, 5'8", 188 pounds, and just really, really stayed with him stride for stride. Look at that. Now, look at how smart he is. He looks back and sticks his hands out, and then coming over at the last minute is Eugene Wilson to help him out, the young rookie. Well, that's great coverage. Wow. You know what? And turning around and looking up for the ball makes almost anything he does legal. Kevin Falk deep for the punt. They'll let it go, and it makes the end zone. They'll start from the 20 to the punt of 46. A game of field position and one field goal so far. 3-0 New England. Pat's defensive unit gets a break on the sideline. They have held Dallas scoreless here in the first half as their offense will take over at the 20. Keep in mind, this Cowboy defense has held every opponent they've played to just six points in the first half of the game. So far, they've got New England at three. Juan Smith as they try to establish a running game, pushing the pile up to the 25-yard line. If you just joined us, you have only missed one big play, and that was Brady with a 46-yard strike to Deion Branch, who was wide open, and that set up the game's only score in Adam Vinatieri field goal. Mike, you talk about not much action in the opponent's territory between the Two, these two teams, only three of 50 snaps were inside the 40-yard line of the other, other team. Think about that. Field position. Both coaches are very good at playing the close to the best in a game like that. And first up the middle this time by Antoine Smith. Well, at that time, Darren Woodson comes right up the middle and doesn't get the play that they're looking for. Normally when they blitz, the Cowboys will blitz for two reasons. One, to put pressure on the quarterback, the other to stop the run. That time, Antoine Swift, Smith did a really nice job of avoiding the contact. Gibbons is the single wideout to the top of your screen. Smith will carry. And again, breaking tackles and dragging people out to the 38-yard line. And what New England's doing now is Brady's been throwing the ball 
pretty well. But they're able to run the ball. On first down, they're picking up between four and six yards. On this play here, they picked up four. They, they keep themselves moving the chains, and that's all they really need to do. Not only that, but they're keeping the Dallas Cowboy defense on the field. That last drive by the Cowboy offense was seven and a half minutes. You, they're not big, so they're small. You want to wear them down a little bit. That's what New England's trying to do. Second and six. Brady wants to go play action this time under pressure. Step to his right and dropped. David Graham was open. The perfect throw by Brady and Graham couldn't hold it. You can't throw the ball any better than, than Brady just did. Well, and he hits Graham right in the hands. When you don't have Troy Brown available, you have to get more production out of your tight ends. Chris, uh, Christian Fourier is one. Daniel Graham is the other. Their number one pick from a year ago. He's got it. He's just fighting it. He's got 27 catches. That would have been his 28. And that play really hurts because they set it up so well running the ball and only one wide receiver, then they get the tight end up. Well, you're, you're against the number one defense in football, so every drop is magnified. Dallas, they've got 10 guys up on the line of scrimmage. And here come most of them. Brady unloads. And caught down at the 30. David Gibbons. There's a flag on the play, and it's against Dallas. It's probably going to be roughing the quarterback. It is, and that'll be tacked on to the end of the play. I don't know how many guys they blitz. It looked like 15, but they didn't get there in time. Only they, nine. They had 10 on the line of scrimmage, but I'll tell you what. They went, they sent downfield, and Gibbons is there. Terrence Newman is the rookie. Look at this. He got man-to-man -man coverage downfield because of the blitz. David Gibbons does a great job of coming back to the ball. Take a look at this. David Wait. Gibbons does a terrific job of finding the ball. But Tom Brady just throws it up in the air for him to get it. The guy that made this all happen was Joe Andrusi, the right guard, number 63. He blocks on Will Blades, 99. Then he picks up the blitzing secondary guy and allows Tom Brady to slide a little bit left to make the play. And now check out the lead blocker for Antoine Smith. It's Dan Klecko, the rookie defensive lineman. Smith off the right side. Touchdown! You know, when you said Dan Klecko in the backfield, I mean, you talk about getting off on the staff. He looked like a back. You know, most... Big guys, the defense. Watch, watch number 90. What, look how fast he gets into the hole. Antoine Smith's no dummy. I just follow him right on in. Klecko has played, in addition to fullback, defensive end, nose tackle, and linebacker this year. And Antoine Smith gets the first touchdown of the game. Both scores set up by big pass plays from Tom Brady. And that's what he's done all year long. Vinatieri for the point after it. It's blocked. The first miss extra point of the year for Adam Vinatieri, and that means it's nine nothing. Well, you take a look at if this is if this is on Vinatieri, you're gonna it, the ball has to come out. Here, the hold is there. The ball is set down perfectly. He hits the ground before, but look at the guys up in the air. Number 76. Is that Flozell Adams? It is. Yeah, when you hit a guy in the armpit, it's not high. <laughs> That's not high. But. Tom Brady, we said he'd have opportunities for big plays. He had one to Deion Branch. Now look at the guy in the middle, right there. You're going to see David Givens just take off and run right up the field. They do a terrific job of blocking. All he does is run. Tom Brady does an excellent job of just hanging the ball up. Let him go make a play on it, and then let Terrence Newman try and bring him down and catch him. That's just... That's a quarterback saying, I'm going to throw it up. There isn't anybody in the field but my receiver and a defensive back. Gibbons and Newman. You know what that is? Get it. It's one of those deals where, you, where you, you play, and you also figure that two things could happen. Your guy can catch the ball or pass interference. Or it's going to be incomplete. He's going to fight it and keep it away from the other guy. So really, nothing bad happens if you get it out of your hands. Brady has hit a 57-yarder and a 46-yarder tonight. I mean, as a quarterback, you, uh, you just, you can't wait to see a team blitz. I mean, if you have the confidence that he has. Ross on the run on the short kickoff. 
up to the 36. Let's check in with Susie. Well, Michael Irvin played for the Cowboys for 12 years. You've seen Jerry Jones interact with a lot of head coaches. What's the difference these days at Valley Ranch? Well, you know, the greatest thing is you, the greatest thing when you hear Jerry talk about the possibility of the Cowboys going to the playoffs. As a matter of fact, you don't hear him talking about it. Uh, Bill Parcells, he has all that under control. And Jerry has, gave, Jerry has given him total reign, and that's a great thing. What are your impressions of Quincy Carter against a pretty complex defense? Well, you know what, I think Quincy's doing a good job. I, I just talked to Antonio O'Brien, and I told him to tell Quincy on the deep balls to just put a little bit of air under the ball, just like Tom Brady just did, just to give him enough time to find the ball and hopefully the quarterback to lose the ball. Michael. Carter under pressure, ducks outside of McGinnis and throws underneath to Anderson. Richie out of bounds at the 40. The same thing we've seen out of Quincy Carter all night is just good pocket presence. He feels the pressure. He slides around and makes the throw. Watch this. Here comes the pressure. Steps up. Doesn't like what he sees. Again, Willie McGinnis just playing terrific. Now he gets it outside to Richie Anderson. And I don't agree with Michael Irvin. That's coming from a wide receiver. Right. Michael, Michael says, just throw it up to me somewhere in the area. I'll go get it. I think the deep balls that Quincy has thrown have been right where they're supposed to be. Tyrone Poole's done a great job of defending. Anderson with a carry. Flag is down as he dives to the 45-yard line. Well, there's another guy we had on the show Joe disagreed with. Him. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But he's Wait, a receiver. Mike's hey, a let's receiver. get some more guests down there. Michael's always going to say, throw it, I'll go get it. I mean, you, as a quarterback, you can't count on that all the time. And this one will come back. The two-minute warning officially comes at 157. And wouldn't you guys agree that there is no comparison between Quincy Carter this year and Quincy Holding. Carter last year? Number 73, offense, it's a 10-yard penalty. Remains, second down, timeout. Two-minute warning. All right, we'll get the answer to that question when we come back. 157 to go in the half. We are 9-0. Dallas after the penalty, second and 15. Three-man rush against Carter. So he goes underneath the hamper who wisely gets out of bounds to the 34. And that's that's what they're going to let Quincy Carter do. They're going to let him throw the ball out. They rush three, drop eight. As I said before, when you've got a young quarterback or one that you don't think is that good, you don't put pressure on him and blitz him because you don't want him to make that one big play against you. But when Quincy reads three-man rush with that big offensive line he has, he's got to know in his mind that he's got more time than he really thinks. There you are talking like a quarterback again. It yes. doesn't quite work that way. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Third and 13. And Carter just unloads. Bryant overthrown. Now see all the time he had to throw the ball? He knew he had more time. Right. The three-man rush. See where it wound up? Well, you know, he's got he's got all day to throw this thing, and all he has to do is find the open guy. Now that's a lot harder than it is. Oh, thank team. you, Paul. That's the part that's hard. But he's got to know in his mind. Look at, look at the line of scrimmage. He's got all kinds of time to throw the ball. Just sit there. Just wait, 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 wait. And he tries to heave it. Antonio Bryant tries to take off and go after it, but uh, no play there. That's just a very complex defense he's going into. If you're a Patriots fan, you'll like this. They've won each of their last 15 games when they've led it to half, and Dallas has lost its last 20 road games when they trail it to half. And Kevin Falk with a good return up past the 45, a return of 20. Let's go back to the studio. I'm Chris Berman. Coming up at halftime, the run of the Kansas City Chiefs. What a great run it was at 9-0. They were felled by the Cincinnati Bengals. We'll have our fans in three minutes and a trip around the league. Everybody was playing our halftime heroes and bonus coverage from north of the border. Great Cup highlights the CFL championship game. Back to Foxborough. All right, Boomer, thanks very much. A minute 31 to go in this one. New England would like to tax some more points onto their 9-0 lead with a minute 31 on the clock and two timeouts at their disposal. Brady got it. Greg Ellis. And Greg Ellis is the one guy from the outside who can give them the big pass rush. 
That's his fourth sack of the year. Right around Tom Ashworth. Tom Ashworth is on the outside. He's number 68. And Ray Ellis just beats him right to the quarterback. They didn't even slow him down. Patriots with a big advantage throwing the football. Of course, the Cowboys have put themselves in a lot of long yardage situations. They want the screen to Falk and overthrow. That sack was very big because going in at halftime down nine versus 16, obviously there's a point differential, but when you're the Dallas Cowboys on offense, you just don't think you can score 16 points, to be honest with you. Arias just goes hard around the outside on Ashmore, like you say, Paulo, and, I mean, Tom Brady has no chance to even get rid of the football to avoid the sack. And Dallas, you know, they still have two timeouts, so they can take a timeout here, get the ball back, and still have some time to maybe do something. Third and 16 for New England. Oh, no. Looked like Obagu jumped offside. Free play for Brady. Can't do anything with it. And the ball comes out after he's down. Well, you know, you don't have a whole lot of time. back. Yeah, you don't have a whole lot of time, but you, you would have been able to get the ball back, and Obagu just goes offside. Third down and ten, you have a lot more plays to choose from on the play sheet that Charlie Wise has as opposed Outside. to third and fifteen. Defense, number 92, the five-yard penalty remains third down. Well, Where Tom get... White said number 92, but it was number 90, Obago. Where do they get these numbers? They don't even have a 92. I don't either. <laughs> some... Talking to Bill Belichick on Friday, he said something that jumped out. He said, don't let the Dallas Cowboys play the game the way they want to. I want them to play the game the way we want to. Right now, he's forcing them into long yardage situations. He's hitting the big plays. Right now, the Pats are dictating. Falk to about the 43. Dallas is taking a timeout. They want him to punt. Really? And they'll stop the clock yes. with 42 seconds to go. <laughs> Good so winner. Dallas will have a chance to get the ball back. Nine nothing. Belichick and Parcells together for a long time. Three different teams: head coach and assistant, 81 to 90 with the Giants, two Super Bowl wins, 96 with the Patriots, AFC champions, 97 to 99 with the Jets. They won a 98 division title. And when Bill Parcells went to the front office of the New York Jets. He handpicked Bill Belichick as his, as his successor. That lasted one day, and Belichick then took the job at New England. I know. I, I notice when you talk to Belichick, I mean uh, to Parcells, who's Joe is deathly afraid of. But anyway, it would scare him. <laughs> but when you talk to him and you give him a compliment, he says, "I don't necessarily think that's so." You know, he never really builds these guys. He does deflects everything. Zuriel Smith deep to receive. Signals fair, gets backs away at the last moment. That was very close to getting in the way of that football. Clock stops with 30 seconds to go in the half. Let's go to Susie. Well, Mike, both head coaches could be considered coach of the year, but it's interesting to note the history that has made Bill Belichick as successful as he is. 29 years as an NFL coach. He said in his first five years, he worked with five different head coaches, four different coordinators, about 50 different assistants. It was like having four graduate courses in football. He lived it day and night. But what was interesting was, the question posed to him was, who influenced you throughout all those years? He never did mention Bill Parcells, and we know how many years they spent together. Which pretty much sums up the uh, press coverage of these two leading up to this game. They said some reverential things about each other. That was about it. Grable almost had the sack. Then Carter takes off and slides into the 28-yard line. Okay, I have been so impressed by Quincy Carter. Mike, you made the point earlier. This, this young man doesn't even resemble the Quincy Carter we sure saw doesn't. play a year ago with the Dallas Cowboys. He's so much more mature, so much more poised. He is tremendously aware of his surroundings. This one's out in the flat to Anderson. He'll get out of bounds and have a first down up at the 33-yard line. And he was really kind of offended yesterday. There's kind of a hint that he doesn't see down the field. He says, there are some things I still don't see, but people are not giving me credit for what I've learned. And, and you know, when Richie Anderson was talking about him staying, going in early, staying, studying, 
His whole life is now dedicated to playing quarterback, and Parcells is the guy that did that. The other thing is, is that he also mentioned, Paul, along those lines, is everybody thinks that they cut the offense back because he can't handle it. This, this offense is not cut back. This is just like everybody else runs in the league. Well, he says there's some quarterbacks in this league that do only have to read half of the field to make it easier for them, but I'm not one of them. I read the whole thing, and you can believe him the way we have seen him play, as particularly tonight. Uh, and this was a guy who lost his job last year to Chad Hutchinson. Well, Maurice Carthon really kind of helped him to hit Quincy Carter because Bill Parcells has a tendency to look at a guy and, and give you the nasty look and yell at you and say some things. And what Maurice Carthon said to Quincy Carter was, just get the message. Don't look at the way he delivers it. Just get what's in the message because there is something he's trying to say. And standing his right with Sean Payton, who joined him after a stint with the Giants. You see his coordinator. Sean basically handles the passing aspect of it, and Maurice Carthon, the offensive coordinator with the title, and was really the first hire for Bill Parcells, handles the running aspect of their offense. Here's a very interesting defense. <laughs> Patriots had three guys near the line of scrimmage. The rest of them are spread out between the 30 and the goal line. This is where you throw in that big old lateral play. This looks like a kickoff return. <laughs> guys closer to the line of scrimmage on kick buses. Now there are guys wide open, only 10 yards down the field. And here's one of them on a little screen. He's got to go all the way to the end zone with Richie Anderson to make this one work. He's down to the third. There's a flag on the play. And there, there's more than one flag. And it cannot end on a defensive penalty. It's the half I'm talking about. If this should be against New England, what a huge break it would be for the Cowboys. No, it's against, it's against Dallas. Holding, number 89, offense, penalty is declined. That's the end of the first half. Hey, you see all these guys? The Cowboys, as we get ready to start the third quarter. It's like 4th of July here. We've seen some fireworks in this game. A couple of big plays out of New England. The Cowboys need to find some. Short kick taken back to the 34-yard line. All right, Dallas, we have emphasized as a team that does not play from behind very well. They're not built that way. They're played to run, get ahead, and win that way. Well, right now they're behind 9-0. What do you do if you're the Dallas Cowboys? I think you still play the defense as you've been playing, and, and I like the way they came out. They ran the football. They're doing very well. All they got to do is stay out of second and third and long. Well, six of the nine third downs they've had have been for nine yards or more. That's not what this offense is built for. I believe it's got plays in it. I think it can make some big plays, but I don't think it can keep overcoming long yardage third down. Tom Brady and the Patriots will start from the 35-yard line. Falk is in there running back, and he is slammed to the ground by Leroy Glover. Holy cow. There have only been two big plays in this ball game, both engineered by Tom Brady. This one to Deion Branch, who was wide open over the middle, turned it into a 46-yard game. That set up the field goal. And then Gibbons on the jump ball downfield, that set up the only touchdown of the ball game. And the thing that was impressive to me but from a New England standpoint is the plays, but Terrence Newman, the corner, makes tackles on those things and can just flat run. It's a terrific secondary. Blitz coming. Brady throwing under pressure. And incomplete. They said it hit the ground under Graham at the 45-yard line. Of the 16 passes Tom Brady has thrown, you can see how he has spread the ball around. You see the two big plays down the field, out to the left, out to the right, up the middle. It's very difficult for a defense to get in at halftime and say, all right, we have to take away this part of the field. He has spread it around very well, reading the defense, capitalizing on the opportunities when the Cowboys decide they want to blitz. I believe they're up here to try and blitz, but they're not going to. They've already been cooked a couple times. Get them at it. They stack the line of scrimmage and then backed off on third and long. Brady goes underneath them, almost intercepted. That would have been an easy touchdown right in the hands of Tony Dixon, and he couldn't hold it. He was trying to hit Kevin Falk, and he threw that. I mean, he really rifled that ball. I don't think 
if, if Falk would have gotten his hands on, he would never be able to catch well, it anyway. Well, Dixon couldn't. You can't stop. If you're a running back or a wide receiver, you can't start somewhere and stop and have the quarterback think you're going to keep going. Walter will have to punt to Zuriel Smith. This Low line drive returnable kick. Smith from the 24. And just brought down around the ankles as he got to the 33, a 41-yard kick, an eight-yard return. And Larry Izzo, who's been a special team star for two franchises, made the stop. ESPN Sunday Night Football, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Friendly non-stop service all across the country. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. And Mazda, there's a soul of a sports car in everything we make. The historic town of Foxborough, Massachusetts. Now, Bill Parcells told us yesterday Bill Belichick will take away their biggest weapon first. Well, Terry Glenn has not caught a pass, and that's their biggest weapon. Dallas starts at its own 32. Amber to the 36. You know, this just it just seems like don't don't make a mistake. Whatever you do, don't make a mistake. That's exactly what it is. Remember the first thing Bill Parcells said, you can't beat yourself. That's the only, if you beat yourself first, you never have a chance to win. So the first thing we will do is not beat ourselves, and then we'll find a way to win. And in the two losses the Patriots have had this year, to Buffalo in the opener and Washington a little later on here, that's exactly what they did. Just gave it away. Uh, Brady had seven interceptions in those two games. Carter play action. McGinnis can't get it. And Quincy Carter throws a strike to Bryant right through his hand. Let's go to Susie. Well, this game is so much about relationships. Patriots owner Robert Kraft is good friends with Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. When you both had the same head coach, what kind of stories do you share over dinner last night? Well, uh, we, we talked about that. We have very close families. Uh, he thanked me for putting uh, his coach through the learning curve and helping him to get where he is, and I accepted his thanks very graciously. But Jerry helped us a lot when we came into the league, and has been a great friend and a great partner in the NFL. Is the winner of this one by the next dinner? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. We, uh, we, our families have had many dinners together. And this is what it's about, prime time, Sunday night, winning championships, having a new stadium, and we want to thank our fans for their 99th straight sellout. They've been great to us, and we learned a lot from the Jones family. You guys are both so TV savvy. Can you have fun with all of the storylines going into this game, particularly about the coaches? That's what it's about, and, and the passionate fan On a Sunday night when these people have to go to work, and all the fans viewing here throughout the country, we're going to get you double-digit ratings. And, and that's what you want. It's great. And, and both coaches are great for this game. You know TV. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Dallas, fourth and in inches. They will punt it away. Kevin Falk signals fair catch and makes it at the 25, a 33-yard punt and no return. New England leads by nine. In a battle of field position, the Patriots lead it 9-0, third quarter. They take over at their own 26-yard line. And in a battle of time of possession in the first half, the Cowboys had the ball 18 minutes, 30 seconds. New England, 11:30. That is not what the New England Patriots want to do. They want to keep that Dallas defense out on the field a lot more than they did in the first half and try and tire them up, tire them down. But it doesn't make any difference if you're not, you're not scoring. I mean, time of possession doesn't mean a thing. That, that number nine up there, zero, that means something. Thank you, Professor. Just trying to help you out with the time of possession. You've come up with some well, gems. Everybody makes a big deal out of time of possession. If you don't do anything with it, what good is it? No, it's true. For example, uh, last week we had the, um, when we did the St. Louis Rams. Interesting team. You got St. Louis and Baltimore. Which one would you think would have more time of possession? If you think the, the Ravens would? They did. It was like 35 minutes for uh, St. Louis. That's exactly what Bill Parcells wants. He wants to see his team maintain this and then get something out of it. You saw the numbers moments ago on Tom Brady, seven out of 18 in this game. Dallas allowing a league low 49% for opposing quarterbacks. Their pass defense has been sensational. The run defense isn't bad either. 
No, it isn't. Giving up 85 yards rushing. Number one overall in the NFL. Antoine Smith pounds his way across the 30-yard line. There's Darren Woodson in on the play. Now, there's a guy, boy, talking to him, this is a guy who has newfound life. He's so sick and tired of losing. Three, five, and 11 seasons. Two before that weren't good. And when he found out that Bill Parcells might be his coach, he said he, he was ecstatic to know that someone of that caliber would be coming and hopefully coaching the Cowboys. And he's pretty happy about the other guys they put in the secondary, too. Stumbling as he took the handoff, Antoine Smith, he'll lose a couple. Darren Woodson spoke at length about the way the attitude has changed at Valley Ranch. Guys used to play dominoes. They used to have cell phones. He said now at lunchtime, when you walk through it around lunch, there's hardly anybody there. It's like a ghost town was the word he used because all the players are in looking at film and studying film. And that's really all Bill Parcells asked. He says, I want you to be I want you to be diligent, I want you to be tough, and I want you to make mistakes. And usually Bill Parcells finds a guy to yell at Darren Woods and say, it was me. He said he told me he was going to do it, and he's done it. Oh, and Brady just gunned one off of Daniel Graham. It's like he didn't get hurt by that. Actually, that uh, ball hit Ebenezer Ekubon. It did. It was tipped. Just to the, to the left here, take a look at Ebenezer Ekubon. He hits, a, <laughs> hits Graham in the head. He hits a header. It's, it's no good. It's like a soccer game. <laughs> it's a header. I'll tell you, Brady throws hard short. Now New England will have the punt. Zuriel Smith waiting back in his 30. And down at the 30. A loss of one and a solid tackle by Chris Akins, who got there just about the same time the ball did. Timeout, New England continues to throw a shutout at the Cowboys. Cowboys will take over at their own 30, trailing nine to nothing. In seven possessions in this game, they've had six punts. The other possession ran out with a half. Play action by Carter. And incomplete to Bryant. That would bounce off his face. I mean, Antonio Bryant has had two balls go through his hands. The last series had one slip through. Now this one again bounces right off his chest. This is an excellent throw by Quincy Carter right into the soft belly. Actually, it goes right off his arm. Well, remember, he's playing for Joey Galloway, who's out with a strained quad. So, um, that Antonio Bryant is that, that means he's not supposed to catch him? It means he's not a starter, <laughs> to tell you that. Yeah, he's a better player than that. He won the Bolitnikoff Award at Pitt as the best college receiver in the country. Hambrick on the toss. Flag is down as he gets back to the 34. Let's go to Susan. Well, Mike, one of the stories we followed throughout the game, one of Bill Belichick's ways of stopping the opponent is shut down their star. And for the Cowboys, it's Terry Glenn. So what the Patriots done, basically, is played a zone defense against them. Guys passing him off, Law, McGinnis, Wilson, Harrison. Everyone's teaming up to shut down Terry Glenn. They allow him to just run inside, but he can't do much more than that. No deep balls for Terry Glenn. And Susie, if there's anybody out on that field that wants to succeed tonight, it is Terry Glenn. He made such a big deal out of coming back here to New England, says he hates everything about it. He did not leave, of course, on the best of terms. Doesn't have a Super Bowl ring because he wasn't on the team. He doesn't have a catch either tonight. Here they are going to Dallas Cowboys again. The one thing we talked about, Joseph, is here's another penalty. 15 yards, tripping penalty, or 10 yards, tripping penalty. They do everything to go the wrong way. Second and 20. Carter trying to get the screen to Hamburg, and it's incomplete. It looked like Vrabel and Teddy Bruschi were right in the middle of that screen. Excellent diagnosis on their part. Well, he has really has no place to go with this. He's trying to hit Hamburg number 42 in the middle. He's looking downfield first. Look at Bruschi, 54. He's there. He almost makes the play. There's really no place to throw the ball. You, you sense right now that Quincy Carter is getting a little bit more uncomfortable in the pocket. He's starting to make throws that this is not what Bill Parcells wants to see from his quarter. Just throw it away. He can't be the reason this thing comes apart if it does. And remember, Bill Belichick had two weeks 
to work on his defense for this game. Third and a mile for Carter. Flushed out of the pocket, steps out of bounds at the 26. He'll have to punt again. Well, they did have, they had a three-man rush, and then they sent Willie McGinnis, number 55, up the middle to make it a four-man rush. And they didn't block it very well, the Dallas Cowboys. But they keep putting themselves in a bad spot. Well, we've talked about the fact that this offense isn't built to overcome big yards. There's no offense in the National Football League that's built to overcome second and 20, first and, and 25, third down and 14. Fourth down and 14. I think what you're seeing here, too, is the difference in the maturity levels of the football team. The Cowboys are a young team in certain aspects. The Pats are tested and proved. Going to punt the fall. Signals fair catch and makes it the 32, a 41-yard kick and no return. It's been a defensive battle throughout. 9-0 Patriots. You like defense, you like this one. Nine nothing, New England. A touchdown, a missed extra point. It was blocked in a field goal. They lead nine nothing, take over at their own 33 yard line here in the third quarter. Cowboys only a play away from getting back in. Brady guns another one. This one complete up to the 47 yard line. Another perfect throw, and Bethel Johnson, the rookie out of Texas A&M, makes his first catch of the night. Brady just shows you if he has time to throw the football, which he has here, he's going to hit his receiver coming across. That's the perfect pass to Bethel Johnson. The coverage on the outside was perfect. Young, Look at Newman. Young Newman is there. That's a guy you really like. I like Terrence Newman. I think he's just something special. Brady goes right back to the air, and this one is tipped and nearly intercepted by Dat Wynn, who was such an outstanding And that was one of the things that, that was one of the things Bill Parcells talked about. His ability in pass coverage really jumped out at him. Dat Wynn is a guy that Bill Parcells does not like as a prototypical linebacker. He's small, 5'11", 243 pounds. Bill Parcells likes those 6'4", six, 6'5", six, big guys. But Dat Wynn impressed Parcells immediately with his speed, his courage, his hustle, and his striking power. Flag is down, screen to fall. Across midfield. Fall. Got a block. Inside the 30, and now we'll check the marker. Gain of 25. They're calling holding against New England, and this was right at the point of attack, too. Right. This screen has not worked against the Dallas Cowboys. The defensive line were the guys that were there that should have made the play. The reason the play wasn't made because it was held. See, they not only have speed on that defense, they hustle. It's yes, one thing do. to be a fast defense. It's another one to get out and hustle like they do. And when you hustle, offensive linemen have to tackle you to stop you. You have to think about something. New England, they had a, up until that, that to Bethel Johnson, that, that what, 12 yard catch? Called a pass play. Well, a 12 yard catch. They only had 187 yards of total offense. Right. And two plays, two pass plays, accounted for 103 of them. So this Dallas defense, I mean, they really have done the job. Now they have the New England offense in that same bind that they found themselves offensively in all night. Second down and 20. Brady play action with time goes to Antoine Smith over the middle. And Smith is hit immediately by Dexter Copley. And there's another flag down. They're going to call Joe Andruzzi possibly for coming in late. He's up there trying to protect Antoine Smith. Could call him for a late hit. I just get the other day talking about Friday talking to Bill Belichick. And I said, you know, we, nobody has big numbers on these teams. There it is. Nobody has real big numbers on this team. I mean, they, you don't see them stand out right. or anything, except for one thing. They're third in the league as far as penalties are concerned. And when we said that to Belichick, I thought he was going to get sick. He just rolled his eyes. I thought he was going to get sick. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 63. It's a 15-yard penalty. This foul occurred after the play was over, so the down counts. Third That's down. That's Joe Andruzzi, the right guard. Watch it here. And this is a point of emphasis this year. They do not want late blocks, and having guys picked off, and that is way too late. Well, no, he's not even trying. See, he's not even trying to block anybody. He's actually leaning down and sort of slides into somebody. I, I that was a ticky tack call, in my 
my opinion. I just, that was really bad. He well, Bill Belichick agrees with him. He wasn't trying to knock anybody off the pile. That's about as ticky-tack as it gets. Now it's third and a $50 cab ride. Ticky-tack. Brady goes underneath. Now that was not ticky-tack. No, and think... big Roy Williams is right there to hold it to nothing. <laughs> Roy Williams, when, when Parcells was talking about him, he said, I'm going to tell you now, that this guy's going to hit you. I mean, he's going to lay the wood to you. Roy Williams is one of those guys, he said, sometimes he gets in trouble and he may get beat. But when if you're in his area and you catch the ball, Roy Williams is going to lay you out. As Bill Parcells says, he has a lot of wood in his knapsack. <laughs> Fourth and 37. And the punt to Zuriel Smith is just awful. Neither one of these punters distinguishing themselves this year. Ken Walter, a 34-yarder. That's with the roll. He came in ranked 32nd among all punters in the league. Of course, Parcells and Bill Belichick have been together much of their coaching career. Together, they won two Super Bowls with the New York Giants, lost a Super Bowl with the New England Patriots to the Green Bay Packers. That's when Bill Parcells resigned after failing to come back with the team on the team plane. Parcells was named the head coach of the Jets, took Belichick with him as his assistant. Parcells resigns, Belichick named his successor. That lasted one day, Belichick quits, and then he's named the head coach of the New England Patriots, and they go on to win the Super Bowl. Quincy Carter trying to get something started, now he runs. Good pump fake by Carter across midfield. Out of bounds near the 45-yard line. And Quincy Carter showed you what he can do that time. I'm going to tell you what, Willie McGinnis, they, he's had at least five shots at Quincy Carter tonight. Just can get him. And he hadn't made one. I mean, at the end of this is a reach. Willie McGinnis has chased this guy all over the ballpark. Willie McGinnis, there's number 55. Now watch this. He's back in coverage. He's waiting. He's waiting. Quincy Carter comes out. Watch this. Oops. I think he has to, I really think he underestimates his speed. You know, he, he they or draft, underestimates his. Well, they drafted Quincy Carter because he reminded Jerry Jones of what Donovan McNabb was able to do. And you see that kind of running ability. Richie Anderson gets the call from the fullback spot. Gets maybe a yard. Are you no talking about, more. You're talking about how good defenses are. This is only, now we got, what, six minutes and 20 seconds and counting in the third quarter. This is only the sixth play that the Dallas Cowboys have had on the other side of the 50-yard line. And that's amazing. And and really, New England had everything going to keep that field possession game going, or field position game going, until they committed the big penalties that backed them up. Anderson and Adrian Morrell in the backfield. Morrell signed in the middle of the year. He's given them a boost in the running game. Play action to Morrell Carter. Rifles that one complete. Terry Glenn with his first catch. He's booed immediately and out of bounds at the 37. If you say, I can't wait to get back there, I hate everything about New England, these folks are not going to welcome you warmly. Ty Law giving him a lot of room. Little quick rotation. Excellent catch. There's your third and short. Now, these are the type of third downs that the Cowboys are interested in converting because you can run the football from these distances. They're almost in a four-down situation, these guys. No. Is that a field goal kicker that can make this? Yes. Third and two. Carter flips it to Anderson. He has the first down to the New England 30-yard line. You know what Richie Anderson did, Joe? As soon as he caught the ball, he went up. He knew where the first down marker was and went right at it. But I want to show you what Quincy Carter does with this touch pass. This is between Quincy Carter and Willie McGinnis. Once again, Paul, good play action fake. Watch the touch he does. He elevates himself to get the ball over Willie McGinnis, but yet doesn't throw it too hard so that Richie Anderson can't make a play on it. Quincy Carter is putting on quite a clinic of being a very solid, smart, good quarterback tonight. And Dallas needs points out of this drive. Morrell with a stutter step down to the 26-yard line. Morrell played for Bill Parcells one year with the Jets and two straight seasons with the Jets. He had over 1,000 yards. Went to Arizona, had another 1,000-yard season. Another one of those guys that Bill Parcells knows what he is going to get, even though he's been out of football for two years. 
I think here on second down, it's a, this is a good time for the New England Patriots to blitz. Romeo Cornell, the defensive coordinator, I, I think you come after this formation. If it's a pass, you can get the quarterback. If it's a run, maybe you stop at the line. Morrell again lowers his shoulder, pushes tacklers down near the 21-yard line. I just watched Adrian, Adrian Morrell on that play there. He was hit at the 25-yard line, and he moved the pile. Morrell grew up in Hawaii, ended up playing college ball at West Virginia. I don't know you, how I you knew get, you'd get that in. Well, I had to. I don't know how you get from Honolulu to Morgantown, though. Yeah, that's a million Plane. frequent flyer Airplane. Airplane. You, you take a nonstop to Dulles and drop. <laughs> take an airplane to Pittsburgh and you take a bus. Third and two. Morrell on the toss. Has the first down. Boy, you... Richie Anderson gets an outstanding, but you know, all he does is tie up the linebacker. But he comes down and he just throws his body. Look at number 20, Richie Anderson down. Adrian Morrell picks up the first down. This is what this team has to do. They, you know what? They have never gotten away from their game plan. They haven't, and the game, and the game has never gotten away from it. Richie Anderson talking to us last night also said that the only difference in what he's doing for Bill Parcells now than what he's done for him in the past is he is now playing more on third down. Evidence that with a good block. This is the deepest penetration of New England territory for Dallas tonight. Carter, McGinnis, can't get him again. And the pass is intercepted. Back right into the hands of Tyrell. What a gift. That was the one mistake that Bill Parcells did not want to see from Jason Carter. Willie Jason McGinnis. Witten couldn't hold it. And Bill Parcells sees an opportunity to go up in smoke. The Cowboys see a scoring chance go away because of the 30-second career interception by Ty Law. Now Brady goes back to work. Deep sideline, Branch was there, but tipped away at the last moment by Darren Woodson. It hits him like it hit him in the head. It hit him in the back of the head. Deion Branch was off and running. He got by the Cowboys secondary, and then all of a sudden, watch this. Right, bonk right in the back of the head, it hits Darren Woodson. Heads up play, huh? And, and, but look at Deion Branch. This is a smart wide receiver. He comes back and makes contact, hoping that possibly he may get the interference call. That shows how complete a receiver he is. Brady has hit only four of his last 13. This is a really good down. Yeah, it is. New England just isn't bad either. Brady, plenty of time, now throws it incomplete. That was intended for his tight end, Daniel Graham. The big mistake by Quincy Carter is what gave the Pats the ball back. That's Willie McGinnis. That's Jason Witten. That's the tight end release and outside. Willie McGinnis says, I don't care what the play action fake is. I'm assigned to Quincy Carter. That time he tries to make a play and it jumped up and bit him. You see him throwing off balance. It winds up behind Witten right into Ty Law's lap and he found himself a gift. And coach Belichick says, that's the way it's supposed to go. Our ball going the other way. Third and 10 for New England. Brady to throw again. Underneath, ball. Got a block, dives and got the first down. What an effort by Kevin Falk. And just that flash of Christian Fourier, just coming across the defense's front, gives him a chance to make the play. He's going to be coming right at you. Tom Brady steps up. Now, there he is. Now, watch the flash. That little move right there on that win just allowed Kevin Falk to be able to pick up the first down. Just a little bit of a chip every now and then makes a difference. Under two minutes to go third quarter. And in the game when points are precious, the clock will become very important as we take it down. Antoine Smith. Remember, you know, the Dallas defense isn't used to being on the field a lot. Now, they weren't on the first half, which is fine. You get turnovers, and all of a sudden they wind up. To, this game's starting to look a little bit like the Tampa game that got away from Quincy a little bit. Now he's got to bounce back. I'll tell you one thing about the defensive line, though. Man, do they get off the ball. You know, 
it's nice when, when you're playing away when you're on defense because the crowd noise is down. So you watch these guys take off on the line of scrimmage. It's unbelievable. Mike Zimmer's a heck of a defensive coordinator. Second and six. That looked like they were going to get something out of it, but Dexter Coakley messed it up for Antoine Smith. They just, they just move to the ball and, and, and as a group, and that's what you really want to see. Yeah, they do. I mean, it, it, it's, it's one of the things that they work on all the time is when the ball goes to their left, they're all going left. And no, everybody should meet there. And they, they do. There's usually four or five guys. Now, you saw Scott standing in front of Mike Zimmer, the defensive coordinator of the Cowboys, because he was signaling in the defense. They don't want anybody to get an edge and see what the coaches are doing. Third and three. Quick out, and that's caught by Graham, the tight end, and he has a first down. Nice throw by Brady. And Graham just stuck out his hand like he had a mitt on it and made the catch for the first down. End of three, nine nothing. can get the same remarkably clear picture that our guys in the truck have if you get ESPN HD. You can watch next Sunday night's football game, the Redskins and the Dolphins in HD. It's now available nationwide. The entire schedule can be found on ESPN.com. I have one. It is a remarkable, remarkable picture. Now you're going to get another one because you said you have one. That's a pretty slick move, babe. You think? I think that's a good move, Nick. I'll be waiting at the front door. New England with consecutive first down. Falk across the 45 to the 46. There haven't been many big plays in this game, but they have all come from the New England Patriots. The first, Deion Branch, 46 yards from Tom Brady. That set up at Adams and a Terry field goal. And then another bomb, this one to David Givens. And it set up the first touchdown. And then the interception stopped the Dallas drive. The 14th for the New England secondary this year. That one by Ty Law, his third individual. Ball throwback. Brady. David Graham had it, had a guy come flashing right across his face and couldn't hold it. He thought he was going to get blown up. He gets on top of Al Singleton, but that's Darren Woodson that comes flying across his face, and he thinks he's going to be in for the collision of a lifetime. Watch the right part of your screen. Little fleet flicker. Tom Brady gets it out of his nice throw, and there comes Darren Woodson. And believe me, Daniel Graham thought it was all over. Watch him tighten up. He doesn't see that ball. He sees a collision. Oh, Woodson Whoa. made a great play, boy, by just getting the just ball. being there. Yeah. That could have been huge. Third and six. Brady straight back over the middle of Falk. That's another first down. Well, they got the matchup they wanted. They got that win on, on Falk. And when you get that matchup, you got the running back on the linebacker. I know Datwin is a good cover guy, and he's got excellent speed. But you got Falk coming out of the backfield. Here it comes. Brady throws. He sees Falk. Datwin is there. That's excellent, outstanding coverage. Terrific throw, terrific catch. And Kevin Falk has been sort of the guy that's held all this together. He's a terrific runner. He makes big plays in the passing game, as you saw there. Spells Antoine Smith when he needs it. Three straight first down by a yard. And now Falk on first down as the flag goes down, and that's thrown in the area where they usually call a hole. <laughs> Bill Belichick's got to go crazy. Offense, 10 yard penalty remains. First down. Patriots came in third high in the league in penalties, almost nine a game. And that was Dan Copen, the rookie center, 
called for the hold, so they wipe out a good gain and take it all the way back to the 43-yard line. The time of possession still heavily in favor of the Cowboys, but uh, as Paul pointed out earlier, it doesn't matter much. Doesn't matter. Nothing. Doesn't matter. You so a street. Yeah, that's another one. Smart. Fake the end around. Brady floats this one down the sideline, and Dan Quinn with brilliant coverage. He was right there, would not allow the completion to Patrick pass. Dad Wynn is one of those guys who doesn't fit the mold. He's too small. He's too slow. All he does is make plays. And Larry Lacewell, the Cowboys scouting director, said the reason we drafted Dad Wynn is because we passed on Zach Thomas after he didn't fit the mold. Zach Thomas turned out pretty darn well, and they were not going to make the same mistake with that win. And I think Bill Parcells, if he wants bigger linebackers, is going to have a problem fitting them into what these guys are doing. Al Singleton and Dexter Copley and that win. Ball hit in the backfield and spun down. Didn't have a chance. Leonardo Carson, who wasn't signed to the roster until last month, was there. Well, this is the one thing that Bill Parcells told us yesterday about his defensive linemen. He dresses out eight defensive linemen because all of these guys contribute to this football team. And that's why that they play so well in their number one defense, because they can interchange all of these guys. Everybody's got something they do well. Greg Ellis doesn't have to play all the time at the end position, as well as Ekubon. Both of them around 270, not the biggest guys. This is the 12th play of the drive, and they still haven't even reached midfield. Brady stepping up, hit from behind, the ball floats. And New England covers it up. Boy, I'll tell you Ebenezer what. Ekubon got the sack and knocked it loose. Boy, do these, uh, you know, I've been talking about these guys all night long, this defensive line, and they stay with the four-man rush. Ebenezer Ekubon is number 96. Look at the move back to the inside. And there's Leroy Glover, number 97. They're both there to meet the quarterback. And that's on Tom Brady. Tom Brady stepped up in the pocket. His, they had help outside, and he just held it too long. And now Zuriel Smith waits at his 20. High and very short. Takes a good bounce for New England and will get down to the 25-yard line. A 36-yard punt with a 10-yard roll. <laughs> Time running out on Quincy Carter and the Cowboys. Can they come back from a 9-0 deficit? ESPN Sunday Night Football, brought to you by the all-new BMW 5 Series, the ultimate driving machine. Microsoft, your potential, our passion. And UPS, what can Brown do for you? Beautiful facility here in Foxborough, Gillette Stadium, and the home fans have been entertained to a 9-0 lead so far. 11-23 to go in the ballgame, and Quincy Carter is going to have to rally the troops as Dallas needs two scores and they're starting to run out of time. Carter, three out of seven passing in this half, only 21 yards, and the one pick on the deflection. Started to throw on first down, batted down in his face. Bobby Hamilton and Richard Seymour were right there. Let's go to Susie. Mike, the strength of the Patriots' defense this season has been the secondary, especially impressive since Ty Law is the only remaining starter from last year. He and Tyrone Poole working it tonight. And Law told us that Bill Belichick did cut down on some of the complexity of his defense so the new guys could understand it more, he said, so they can use their talent, react more. He still stresses, not just anyone can play in this defense. You really need to be able to think. And that's why he loves the veterans, Susie, the guys who are so versatile. Pressure coming on Carter, throws wide of Anderson, and he is spun down by Bruski, and there's a flag back at the 15-yard line. Roughing the passer. And that's roughing the passer. That's 15. That's a nice way to move the sticks. Look at Bill Belichick. I mean, this guy has got personal foul. Roughing the passer, number 93. And that is their yards. pro Bowl lineman, Richard Seymour. Well, I, I tell you, this is unbelievable to watch what these guys are doing. Here comes Seymour. Now, he's going to throw. What are you doing this? For? Why are you hitting this guy? The ball's gone. That's a good call by the officials. Yes, They're going to protect the quarterback. 
There's no need for it. But what I've seen the Dallas Cowboys do, especially in these last two series, is they've leaned heavily towards the pass. They've only run the ball five times and thrown it about 15 times. That's not Dallas Cowboy offensive football the way it's been. Play by the Dallas Dallas Carter, Dallas. and they'll blow this one dead. This will cost Dallas five. They're gonna wear these flags out, Mike. <laughs> I'm, I'm Nick Kate. I, I never saw. I've they never have more. <laughs> I bet they do. What? Tom White's been a busy guy. He's been on more than Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and that's hard to say. Tom White has been on more than Joe. Well, start number 65. Offense. Five-yard penalty remains. First down. Bill is obviously displeased. Not happy with it. I think so. <laughs> Read lips. My lip reading skills are impressive. <laughs> Andre Garad, not going to be on that favorite player list this week. I still think I still think the Cowboys. You've got 11 minutes, 15 seconds to go in this game. Uh, you, you know, you're not into a hurry up, throw the ball all the time mode yet. Screen to morale. Not much blocking, still got across the 40 to the 41. They get the five yards back. Next Sunday night at 7.30 Eastern, we hope you'll watch NFL Primetime. They'll catch you up on all the day's action. And then Steve Spurrier, the old ball coach, Patrick Ramsey and the Redskins, go to Miami to take on Ricky Williams and the Dolphins on ESPN Sunday Night Football at 8.30. Well, we've had a great schedule all year. We yep. hope you enjoy the remaining games that we have. We have some beauties coming up. Redskins playing better football. Heartbreaker today against Jackson, Carolina. Taking yeah. over the coordinators. Steve Spurrier really running the organization like a head coach. Second and ten for Dallas. Three-man rush underneath, and that one is complete to Brian. He gets to the 49. They'll need about two more for a first down. Mike Grable was there for the stop. Again, Quincy Carter. Talk about his mobility. We've seen him run around. Look at the job he does, just staying in the pocket. Offensive line gives him a throwing lane. That time, Antonio Bryant hangs on. They have a manageable third down. Finally. Hambrick is back in the tailback. Third and about a yard and a half. Hambrick will get the carry. He didn't get it. He did not make it. Just got across the 50. You mentioned four down territory earlier. It might be here. No, I think they made it. Oh, he didn't make it. Not where the, not where uh, the line's whoa, been whoa, marked. Whoa. It. They've got to get to the 49-yard line. Now, are they there? They didn't make it. Well, but I... But I, I Let's well, look at it. Got to be four down territory. Let's look at it. The linesman came in from the sideline and had it marked short of that. Okay. Perhaps the linesman from the other side of the field marked it close. I'm putting my, if I don't get this one right, I quit. This is your reputation right on the line. Well, my reputation's been on the line a long time ago. <laughs> well, you lost it actually a long yeah, time ago, but that's okay. Go ahead, try That's way gone. Well, give me an answer. Come on. I said it's, it, they didn't make it. Okay. Well, that means it's first down. I think they did. I said nope. no. No, no, no. Go for it. I Go for it. I don't agree. I don't care whether you agree or not. I think Go for it. I think you still play the field position game and you kick it. They're going to go for it. They're going to play the field position game and go for it. Now, would you go quarterback sneak like you did the last yes. time? Yes, yes. Quarterback sneak. He's picked up, what, two? Two of them already. Throughout his career, Bill Parcells has gone for a lot. And also, he's the guy calling the plays. This isn't a suggestion to a coordinator. This is the man in charge. Well, Joe, you don't need to be in this game. If you've got, you got, you got a team this big, this line, this big, and you can't move that thing six inches, you, you're not going to win, right? You're not going to win. Well, the game could be on the line here. You just don't want anybody moving off sides. That's the big thing. Don't, don't, and you, like you say, don't keep them at the line of scrimmage. Get, a, get it on with it. Oh, and now Carter has to use the timeout. 9.21 to go in the game. Fourth and inches for Dallas when we come back. 9.21 to go from Foxborough. Fourth and inches for Dallas. The Cowboys have only made three out of eight on fourth down this year. But I like the fact that Quincy Carter didn't have everything the way he wanted it. He had the presence of mind not to try and rush it. He called the timeout, went over and uh, conferred with Coach Parcells, and they make a decision. This is going to be loud in here. They don't need to make an exchange. They need him to, to get the first down. 
Quincy Carter has had a couple of successful quarterback keepers. Boy, they jammed in the middle. They are jammed in the middle. They're waiting for that sneak, and instead they go to Hambrick, and Hambrick lost his footing, and it was stopped by Bruschi. What a, what a bad call. What a, and Quincy Carter has picked up first downs. You, you're handing it off in the backfield, and it's sort of a, it's a, it's a fake to the right, and then come back to the left. I mean, it takes so long for it. Fake to the right, come back to the left. You've got penetration up the middle. Teddy Bruschi puts Hamburg on the ground. Patriots ball. Teddy Bruschi just made what may have been his biggest tackle of the year as he stuffed Hamburg on a fourth and inches play. Kevin Falk in the lineup. They fake it to him. Brady. And they're going to say the receiver and the defensive back got their feet tied up. Mario Edwards and Bethel Johnson. And when the feet get tied up and there's no other contact, they're not going to throw the flag. Tom Brady talked about Bethel Johnson. What they do is they drop back five steps. He's so fast they can't overthrow him. I would have liked to have seen if he could have caught up to that ball. This, I mean, this is incidental contact. I mean, there was no way that Mario Edwards was trying to trip this guy up. I agree up. with you. Mario, don't, don't boo. Mario Edwards was just trying to catch up to him. That's all he was doing. I, I like the Johnson call. with blazing speed. Man, I like Charlie Wise call that. Just go for it. They were going for a throw on that one. Antoine Smith behind Andrews. It. Nice hole off the left side. That win makes the tackle at the 42. You know, in this in this second half of the ball game, now we're going under nine minutes. Up until that play, which is what five yards. New England seven carries for 12 yards. That's why that's rushing the ball. Where's Dallas's defense ranked? Number one. That's why. There it is, right there. You're right. I should have thought of that. And Bill Belichick knows that it was going to be this kind of a football game. And Bill Parcells told us last night. I said, what's the key to the game? He says, turnovers. If you win the turnover battle, you win 84% of the time. And that was up a half a percentage point from a, a week ago coming into this weekend's game. Third and four for New England. They are really thin at wide receiver now. David Gibbons hurt early in the ball. And his return is questionable. Troy Brown not on the active list tonight. That one popped up in the air. Mario, Mario Edwards oh. again with great coverage on, on uh, Deion Branch. Mario Edwards is a different football player in year four. Talking to Darren Woodson, he said, Mario Edwards was never a guy who worked real hard. He didn't really have a work ethic. And all of a sudden, whether it's his maturity or the arrival of Bill Parcells, his work ethic has changed tremendously. This I'll is take a, the arrival of Parcells so, given uh, that question. I'll give him credit to say it's his fourth year and he knows what's going on. Here's a 15th punt. The other 14 weren't worth anything either. <laughs> I would I would go down 10. I'd stand about the 40. Ken Walter, better kick this time. Floats it to Zuriel Smith. Makes the fair catch at the 19-yard line. 8.09 to go. A pair of 7-2 and two division leaders. And it's a 9-0 New England lead. The New England Patriots trying to go 8-2 and two for only the second time in their history. Have a 9-0 lead over the Dallas Cowboys. Fourth quarter, Dallas starts from its own 19. Check it for 14. Carter, Morrell underneath. And he's brought down at the 19-yard line. Willie McGinnis was there. Ten possessions, seven punts. They got to the New England 19, and then they lost the ball on the interception on that drive. They also had one possession ended by the first half. Another possession failed when they went for it on fourth and inches. And every one of their possessions have been, they've started their possessions in their own territory. Well, you knew it was going to be a game of field position and waiting for breaks and trying to make breaks. Carter intercepted by Tyrone Cole. Just, I mean, the Cowboys this whole second half really got away from what kept them somewhat close in the game, and that was running the ball. You had a second down in five. You run the play action, and again, give credit to Bill Belichick in the adjustments that he makes.
He only rushes three. He drops everybody else into coverage. Quincy Carter makes the throw, and Tyrone Poole going back and showing you why he was a coveted free agent for the New England Patriots. That's the third interception for Tyrone Poole, the 15th for the Patriots. And this game looks an awful lot like the Tampa game for Quincy Carter. The first half, he played really, really solid. The second half, he tried to force some plays. Now look for New England to try to run the ball and work the clock. Paul stays inbounds, taken down to the 41-yard line. This is one of those games. We talked about Quincy Carter continuing to grow as a quarterback. 17 for 30, pretty solid. The two INTs, very critical. That one there, he tried to throw the ball. That's what. That's an interception that's just part of the game as a quarterback. The one that he threw before where William McGinnis put the pressure on him and Ty Long made the interception. And that's something that Bill Parcells will have a long conversation with his young quarterback about. Tyrone Bull and Ty Law have each had a pick tonight. Brady slipped as he threw it. Got it out to Patrick Pass. He breaks a tackle and Patrick Pass inside the 30 for the first down. Well, that's nice a, effort by the four-year fullback from Georgia. Well, I'll tell you what, that win had excellent coverage on this play, and Patrick Pass just would not go down. Here's the play. Patrick Pass to the outside. Watch who's there in a hurry. That win. That's Patrick how, Pass just shows you some strength. That's how strong. He's only like 220, and that's his first pass reception. Got a little string, a little streamer. Excuse me a second. He's got a little streamer coming off of his boot and so forth. He wants to make the paper. The paper look? Yeah. Tom Brady now 14 out of 33, 206 yards. Fall. Nowhere to go. Taken down at the 30. He'll lose a yard. But the clock is now under six minutes. That was Darren Woodson again making the play. And this guy from the safety position. But, the, you know, we talked about both of these defenses are just extraordinary tonight. We're watching the Dallas Cowboys. Now, they've been on the field for a little while. But these guys are, you know, they thought they could wear these guys down. They can't. They are fast. Well, if, if their offense hadn't turned the ball over, they, uh, they the defense would have been able to rest even a little bit more. Ball. This time straight up the middle. And he got down to around the 28-yard line. Dexter Coakley coming over and making the tackle. Talked about the speed of these linebackers. We've seen, to me, that win has just been everywhere. Every time there's a Patriot with the ball in his hand, that win has been from one sideline to the other. Dexter Coakley plays that off linebacker position. Another guy who can flat run. Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah. Talk about the difference between a, that, uh, a uh, Dexter Coakley and, say, a Pepper Johnson who's on the staff of the New England Patriots. Different kinds of linebackers. Third and long, and Brady under pressure throws underneath. He has his tight end Christian Fourier. He'll be about three yards shy of a first down. And this will bring Adam Vinatieri on the field. You can bet they're going to let this clock run down a lot more. It should get under four minutes by the time they're ready to do anything. And this field, they share this field with Mr. Kraft's soccer team. So you look at the, the brownness in the chewed up area. It's not an easy surface to kick off of. This is the best thing that happened to the Cowboys. You can hold these guys through just three points. So that, you know, but the problem is if you're, you're not moving the ball down the field. The three mistakes that they made, three interceptions, and then the two long bombs. And there's only really been actually five plays in this game that have exactly. turned it. And here are the plays Paul just talked about. And they have come from Tom Brady's arm to Deion Branch. That set up the field goal. Then to David Givens, which set up the Patriots' touchdown. Ty Law stopped the Dallas deepest penetration with the interception. Teddy Bruschi stopped him on fourth and inches with a great play. And then Tyrone Poole stopped the last drive with his third pick of the season. And Bill Belichick loving every second of it. They've always talked about Bill Belichick being stoic. And when they won the Miami game in overtime, he was all excited. And then he won the Denver game, he's excited. 
he loves football. And he, he loves his football team. His guys play hard for him. His guys really, really respect him, and they like playing for him because he's just one heck of a football coach. Well, you're not going to see him anytime soon headlining at the comedy shop, <laughs> but, you know, he is a heck of a football coach. He's proved it year after year. And that's some ugly dirt that Benetieri's kicking on. Benetieri has already hit from 23. This is from 39. We got offside Dallas, and if that if that happens, that's going to be a first down. It is, and what a killer mistake that is. Here's the thing: you take points off the board. Absolutely, yes, sir. Oh, In yeah. this situation, because you can run time off the clock or make them burn the rest of their timeouts. Were you just asking a question, or were you just I was asking just a talking dumb question? Out loud. I was asking a dumb <laughs> question of a dumb guy, me. <laughs> outside. You've done it. Number 41, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. That's the rookie, Terrence Newman. Hey, I can tell you, right side of your frame, right up top, right there, you see him. Whoop, little too anxious. Benetieri goes ahead, actually makes the kick. Dallas has two timeouts left. But this is going to use up at least another minute off the clock. You know made the tackle? That win. No. Newman, Newman. <laughs> the guy just made the mistake. Here he comes off the corner and he makes the tackle. They got to use their timeouts. Now, if Dallas goes on to lose this ball game, don't look in your rearview mirror, but there are the Philadelphia Eagles. And there's and a, a remarkable turnaround for that. What I think the biggest difference in a Donovan McNabb is he's decided to run with the football. He made some great decisive decisions today against the Giants. He's got his complete game back, and you're right. They're gaining momentum. Antoine Smith protecting the ball gets down near the 10. You know, we had that coach of the year list up there. I'll tell you a guy. You know, Bill Parcells, certainly. Bill Belichick, certainly. I think Dick Vermeil. Marvin Lewis has done an absolutely he was wonderful on there. job. The Cincinnati Bengals are closing and tied with the Baltimore Ravens. Actually, they're ahead of them because they've beaten them once. Could be the Cincinnati Bengals winning a division. When's the last time you've even thought about that, more or less, said it? Not in my lifetime. <laughs> wow. no, I saw him play in the Super Bowl once. Yeah. Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. It was a rather cold day, wasn't it? Boy, well, Tyrone Poole coming up with a big play. Watch this run. Brady naked footwork slips the tackle. Coakley had him dead to rights for a loss of seven or eight. Couldn't make the tackle. But they're right back to fourth down situation again. But the clock just keeps turning. Well, they're going to get help here. They're going to get the two-minute warning. So it'll go all the way down to two minutes. The Cowboys will keep their timeouts. But because of that offside penalty, it cost them a minute and 45 seconds. Yes, it did. Critical error. Two minutes to go in a 9 nothing ball game. Shutouts are rare in the National Football League. They are even more rare for Bill Parcells. Twice. In 248 regular season games, that's if this one holds. And remember, Flozell Adams blocked the extra point. That's why the score is 9-0 uh, instead of 10. So Adam Benetieri can kick it low. Twelve nothing, New England. Dallas will now need a pair of touchdowns in the final 156 to pull this out. In week seven at Miami, Olindo Mare missed a would-be game-winning field goal. The Patriots went on to win it in overtime. 82 yards from Tom Brady to Troy Brown, who was hurt and couldn't play tonight. The Pats had trailed 13-6 in the third quarter. In week nine, they purposely snapped the ball out of the end zone for a safety. Then they got the ball back. Brady marched his team downfield for a touchdown. Another come from behind victory. They were bailed out in that one because the resulting free kick after the safety was misplayed so bad. And the other, well, the other thing is, too, is they've sort of picked up where they left off with the bye. 
they came into the bye, and Mr. Kraft's team, they wanted to get them healthy, right? Well, they get them sort of healthy now. David Givens is nicked a little bit. Troy Brown doesn't play. So they're right back filling in the pieces one more time. Before this game is over, I know all of us wanted to mention this. Hats off to Jerry Jones for hiring Bill Parcells and giving up a lot of the control he has always had over that franchise. I think that is a critical thing for him to do. He wants to win so badly that you go out and get a Bill Parcells. It is a, a courageous move on his part to depart from what he'd always done in the past. I don't think he gave up control. I think he brought a partner in. It's the first time he's hired a football coach with NFL experience. Zuriel Smith on the return. And Smith out near the 35-yard line. We have a timeout with a minute 49 to go in the ballgame. 12-0 New England. Patriots with a 12-0 lead over the Dallas Cowboys. A minute 49 to go in the game. Three-man rush against Quincy Carter. Out in the flat to Richie Anderson. Out of bounds at the 36. Here's Susie. Mike, the story leading up to this game all week was the relationship of Bill Parcells and Bill Belichick. What a successful coaching combination, but how their relationship has been fractured personally since. In the pregame, the two barely acknowledged each other, certainly fueling the fire of what the relationship like these days. Well, we have to wonder what happens in the postgame. Do they continue to fuel that fire? Do they acknowledge each other? I don't think there's ever been as much intrigue regarding a handshake in the postgame. Yeah, you have to wonder. Anderson wheels his way out to the 49. He has eight catch. I'll bet you will have a. I'll bet you will have a camera on or two. Well, I I could I could never see losing a game and going over and shaking somebody's hand afterwards. Well, you know, coaches do that every now and then. Part of the intrigue, Paul. Carter steps up and shows you the strength of that arm. Zuriel Smith. Down to the 20. Uh, the Cowboys have to be a little careful. They still have two timeouts left. And, uh, I mean, New England has to be a little careful. You can't just give them up, give them a cheap score, and they have an onside kick and all of a sudden have an opportunity to, uh, to beat you. Carter's got Smith wide open, doesn't see him, and instead throws it out of the end zone. Our Sunday stud question is the NFL Coach of the Year. Your vote, Bill Parcells, 34.8%. Marvin Lewis finished second. Dick Vermeil, John Fox, and Bill Belichick in that order, third, fourth, and fifth. I don't agree. I think Marvin Lewis had to take a team that was so far away and teach him how to win. Bill Parcells inherited a good defense. He had two great wide receivers to go. I think Bill's done a terrific job with me. Congratulations to Marvin Lewis, and uh, he would have been my choice. I'm going to wait to vote. Belichick has overcome so many injuries. Carter goes down under the rush. Seymour was there along with Dan Klecko. Here's another, here's another rule change that they had. When a quarterback gets sacked now, they don't stop the clock. They used to stop the clock, but not anymore. He got sacked. That clock is still running. Third and 13. Carter under pressure again. Holding penalty. Throws on the run, incomplete. Flag down. And it looked like Kurt Vollers trying to protect his quarterback will be called for the hold. He, he was holding Dan Klecko. Brad New England, we talk about these deep. The two defenses in this game tonight really played hard. Oh. And mistakes made the difference. That's all it was. Holding. Number 78. 10 yard penalty remains third down. Only 17 seconds to go. Stuart Scott and John Anderson standing by for Sports Center. The Bungles no more. You betcha. Parcells and Belichick. What about the relationship and the Olympians stalking terror? 17 seconds to go. Ball back at the 34. Well, you know what, guys? This game lived up to the billing. Believe me, this football game was as good as anything. You knew it would be two tremendous defenses. Field position, oh. and what a shot, and a flag! Eugene Wilson just 
unloaded on Randall Williams, and they're going to flag him for a hit to the head, I believe. It's a hit to the head, and, and that they're going to call. Now they're talking this thing over with. Did he hit him in the head or did he hit the ball? Here it comes. He hit him in the chest, I think. You see the officials. Oh, no, 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 no. He, he, he led with his head. Look at his helmet. He speared him. He, that's that's what they're that's calling. That's his he, shoulder. No, he hit. He leads with his shoulder, Paul. And that's well, what I'm the, tell you I bet you that's I what they're you discussing. His, I'll tell you about. He leads with his shoulder, not his head. But the helmet did get up so under that, his chin. Now it, are they going to call no, it? No. If you lead with your shoulder, it's so close to your head. After the incomplete pass, we have a personal foul, unnecessary roughness, a New England player launched and hit the Dallas player. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. First down. Hold on, Joe. He launched himself. That, that is what they're calling. You cannot launch yourself at a guy. Okay, and so you know, you're supposed to let a guy go no, catch no, the no. ball. I'll tell you, that's, that's watch, the part. Watch, that's, his, watch his shoulder, though, Paul. Now, what? I, what I'm saying, he said, he, I'm, what I'm saying to you is he's saying after, okay. after the after the missed catch, that's what's not right, because this guy still has a chance it to is, catch the ball. He's knocking right. the ball away, but he does launch himself. But, well, no, but no, wait a second. As a defensive player, you're not allowed to, quote, launch yourself? Not no, you're not allowed yes. to do it if he's in imminent danger. That's, All right, back to the game, 11 seconds. That's a wrong call. He was just knocking the ball away from the receiver. Blitz coming against Carter. To the end zone, intercepted. Ty Law's going to bring it out. And Bill Belichick's going to kill him. Yes, he is. He wants him to get down. He wants it all. Ty Law on the return, and he throws it on the ladder. A loose ball. Flag is down. They may call this a forward pass. And Ty Law, I'm sure Bill Belichick is not going to like the way that one went, but it will end the ball game. And New England will win it 9 nothing. Excuse me, 12 nothing. And here's Bill Parcells and Bill Belichick going toward midfield as the referees sort out this During last the return, play. There's an illegal block in the back during the return. That penalty is declined. Ball game's over. There's Bill Parcells, Bill Belichick. They, you know, that's good to see. Well, you know what it is because there's two men that respect each other. Yeah. That we know they spent a lot of time. When we had a chance to talk to them about the fact that there was this rift, there really wasn't. That was a classy ending to a heck of a ball game. The final score: 12 nothing, New England. For Joe Dysman, Paul McGuire, Susie Colburn, our entire ESPN crew. This is Mike Patrick. Good night from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.